and the Sketch Zone podcast is on the air. I am Carlos Gomez, and uh, with us this week, we, uh, we're we going to have a couple movie-making professionals with us, because we, uh, we're going to talk about some technology and technology within movies and stuff. Um, we're waiting for Justin Goby Fields to join us because he's stuck in traffic because he lives in LA and apparently if you add a little moisture to traffic in LA things get crazy up and mm-hmm. so he might have to take a vacation day from work if he doesn't hurry up and get through traffic well he is the boss however we do have we do have Daniel Thrawn with us this week oh. all right wow we have Daniel Thrawn. <laughs> yeah. Really great. <laughs> and welcome, buddy. As always, we have the trusty, bearded, dark chocolate, luscious morsel. Charlie B. Williams. Yeah. So when you introduce me, can you not trail off like you're getting lost <laughs> in thought? Makes me a little uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, I just want to just want to clear the air. That's not a normal reminds me of another situation. And and you don't know they call another bearded man a morsel. You know, <laughs> so I think I think that. Well, I'm just gonna we're just gonna leave that at that. But hello, everyone. I'm glad to be back. Buddy. Oh, uh, you know we have a common friend who is having a. He's cool. having special day today. Mm, wow. The early Happy episodes of the Sketch Zone podcast, you will, you will know that uh, Patrick Coleman our little, uh, dare I say, our, our little funny brother. Uh, happy birthday. Yeah, happy birthday, Pat, man. Coleman, Patrick Coleman, they, uh, yes. I mean, <laughs> motion designer happy birthday kid <laughs> looks like he learned how to go to the bathroom by himself or something happy birthday happy birthday happy birthday to you happy birthday to you awesome all right and you know what else is happening today what's up Ooh. <laughs> I'm gonna, it's going to be the first day I ever knock a laptop off my desktop. Uh, we're going to be giving away a totally tasty Art of Dave Atsy book today. Ooh. I like turtles. Later in the show, uh, we, got a, <laughs> we got a bunch of people participating in this one. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to be doing that. Our, uh, oh, man, the other computer crap the other what? computer has the i like turtles yeah i said it though we're there we're good attaboy mm-hmm. keep you around chuck yep so there's that we're going to be giving that away a little bit later but before we do that uh let's see uh da, 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 da. happy birthday patrick oh hey um Daniel, have you ever heard of the CTN Expo? Oh, yeah. What is the CTN Expo? It's the Creative Talent Network uh, Expo. It's happening in um, Burbank the weekend before Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And yours truly is going. Mm -hmm. I I showed this off a little while ago. What you got? What you got? <gasps> yes. Fresh. That? Reds. Look at that. So I got some new t-shirts for myself. I did. But I do got a bunch of uh, magnets and stickers and stuff that I'm going to be giving away at the show. But I'm going to be there. I'm going to be hanging out with some past guests of ours. Um, and uh, Jordan Koch being one of them. I'm excited because he's actually tabling there. And I have, I have his table number. I'll have to drum it up. I'll have to drum it up. Oh, we have to find anyway. it. There's a couple. Uh, there's a bunch of people going to be there, right? 
Yeah. A lot of, yeah. Maybe a lot of people. You meet it's, some new friends uh, too. It's like, a, I haven't been there yet, but my, my thinking is it's probably a lot like, um, Sigraph, but more for more cozy and 3d animation mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or for the animation end of things. Yeah. But, uh, it's going to be fun. I'm going to be trying to report from there. But we ran a Twitter poll this week okay, for about a week and a half. Uh, and the Twitter, the question was, Carlos is going to CTN Expo. Are you? 50% mm. of the people said, yepers, see you there. Ooh. 50% of the people said, I'd like to, but can't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no one said, hell no, we won't go. Good. So either people are going to go or people are wanting to go but can't. So I think if you – I know if you Google CTN Expo, but I think if you go to CTN, ctnanimationexpo.com, that's mm. CTN as in Creative Talent Network animationexpo.com that'll take you there and you can learn more about that yeah i know a lot of illustrators and students that are going to go and get to talk with some industry pros and practice their ever elusive way of uh networking (laughs) and (laughs) and trying to be themselves so that should be cool because it is like a sigraph and it should be a lot more um intimate, I would like to word, use that word, um, and laid back and chill. So, you know, um, it should be good. Yeah. A lot of uh, of uh, the industry's software companies are going to be there. Uh, ZBrush, PixLogic always has a good presence at there and doing some, like, live stuff, and mm-hmm. I'm sure Wacom have a presence there, and you know, those, those just to name a few. Um, so, if you're in the area and you're going, um, get your business cards ready. Take a look at that big brown kid with a white sketch zone t shirt. Yeah, you have to do something on Twitter, like for those people that poll. I'm gonna like, I'm gonna try to figure out how to how to, to come play. find you. Yeah, and take a picture of this of the uh, of the um, sticker you give them or something, you know, or, or something. <laughs> Enter in a drawing. Sticker looks numbers exactly yeah. like everything else that says sketch zone. It's a sketch zone with the with the pencil on it. Yo, we could probably we should probably give away something. If you number all your stickers, which is going to work for you beforehand, you know, and you call out the number on the next show. Or what we could do, too, is is uh, if you're at CTN and you get a sticker or a business card or something, just give me your business card, and then we can we can figure something out. Mm-hmm. But, uh, let's not do that right now. It's so almost like, where's Waldo? Where's Carlos? <laughs> I don't <laughs> I yo, you take me to dinner. Yo, yo, Carlos is like running through CTN at that point because he's trying to hide from people because <laughs> they keep wanting to come find me. <laughs> and he can talk to anybody. I stayed and hid in my car. <laughs> Daniel, have you ever gone to anything like um like Sigraph or? I I have for twenty years successfully avoided going to Sigraph. I feel terrible about this. You should. And everyone always comes back with the, the greatest tales of debauchery and uh, amazingness. And uh, for some reason, I'm always home. Uh, yeah. We had an amazing time at SIGGRAPH. Yeah. Yeah, and drinking the planet. It was, it was a blast. You should have came. We were off and running. That was a good time. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that CTN is a little bit more my speed. If there's if there's a lot of people like Jordan Koch out there, it's uh, I'm 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 probably gonna relocate. <laughs> mm-hmm. well, our our dear buddy that runs the Animation Network, I'm sure. I don't know if he's gonna be there for sure, but I have to assume that he's yeah. going to make an appearance. Yeah, I think I reached out to him. I asked him about it, but uh, I think he's you know how he works for basically all the 2D studios ever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think he's going to be a little busy, but uh, mm-hmm. but I'm going to definitely reach out to him and see if I can't have lunch with him and just mm-hmm. you know, or you know just hang out, do whatever. I really like him. Chris Wimberly is Chris Wimberly is amazing. He's a good one. Yeah, and his podcast is the Animation Network. 
I think if you go to the animation network dot org, mm -hmm. I think it is. What is that org? You just Google it, it'll come right up. Yeah. Um, so check him out. That you should be listening to us, and and I don't blame you. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> These things, I'm I'm absolutely terrible at networking. I'm the worst at networking of all time. <laughs> and, uh, we, we have to stop playing. <laughs> How do you <laughs> how do you maneuver how do you maneuver through your your career? Is it just like is your work? Are you getting work? Just word uh, I I pay people off basically. That's part of it. Yeah, no, it's uh, <laughs> there. It is. Sometimes you have to do what you have to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you do. Yeah, that's it, man. That's all there is to it. No, I mean, like I feel like uh, you know when I get to these when I get to. The, uh, situations like this, mm -hmm. like I am, as you know from the last time we talked, I'm one of the least technically knowledgeable people of all time, and like, there's no, there's no reason I should be in this business. <laughs> uh, and, and, and so, I, uh, when I find myself at one of these giants, like, it's hard not to uh, fall into like the techno babble soup, you know, it's like, it's, uh, it's all, it's all fascinating and interesting, but I'm, I can't chip in on any of that stuff. Um, so what, like Charlie, what is your advice for these things? Like, how do you get the edge in when you talk to folks? When I talk to folks, Bring well, mm -hmm. you really, you really wanted the secrets of, of <laughs> <laughs> secrets, dude. Secrets. Okay. So like, like networking one on one. Well, I have a buttery smooth voice, and I was gonna say people tend to listen. To me. <laughs> no, no, uh, no seriousness. Um, I kind of started going to stuff like this back when I was a freshman uh, in college. Mm -hmm. You know, lo locally. Um, actually, when I first met Carlos outside of our first meeting, which was interesting, with him screaming at a computer screen, um, Carlos after he graduated and was in the industry, would come back and give back to school by running different user groups. So there was a Flash user group he used to run back in the day, which would bring in people from different studios. And I would go to those, and then I would find more from that, from that experience. I would find more. So over the years, I've learned how to talk to people and kind of just be myself. I think what students do when coming out of school or when they're in school is – you know what you do if you see a famous person. You become a little bit starstruck, even though that dude that you're talking to that may have that position that you want is a regular dude. So the first thing I always say is just to be yourself and be normal, right, and have normal conversation, not conversation that leads into talking about which, you know, program you like best, but, like, how about those Cubs? You know, it's just, like, normal conversation, right? Speaking of which, how about those Cubs? They're doing pretty good now right now so um <laughs> so with that being said when you do that you have to like in a conversation you have to build some type of morale and that usually after you talk about something that's non-art related it kind of moves into an art talk because we're all artists and we're all nerds and we all like that kind of thing or a move into movies or a move into books or whatever because the only thing you want to do in the, in the first five ten minutes or when whenever you're talking to somebody, it's just kind of get some type of like common ground relationship to be able to get a, get a business card or whatever. A little that, bit of rapport. You want a rapport. Yeah. Right, right. Common ground or rapport, right? Uh, and, you, and you don't want to try to force that. Some people are talking some people aren't. But a lot of these times when people go to CTN, let's take CTN for, for example. CTN is, a, is so like user friendly. It's such a cozy type of like uh, c convention to go to everybody there wants to talk in some type of way so just like be yourself and and then slowly talk about your work everyone there is just as it's about it as you are right. too right, right right so you know right good point that's what i say first because people try too hard and then you get into this whole thing where i've watched people cut people off i've watched people like walk up to me having a conversation with somebody that i happen to know actually know and then literally, you know, do the hovering thing where they're like hovering the conversation, but not giving yeah, any. Sorry, Chuck. And it's all lined up. Yeah. They're right. And they're they're not giving any, any kind of like, they're not adding to it. They're not, you know, it's almost like the sitcom where the dude just starts to laugh with you. And, you know, he came in at the end of the joke. He doesn't know what the joke is. And then instantly goes into their question. 
you know, it's just, and maybe that's because we're artists. I don't know if this happens with regular people that go to like regular colleges and they're meeting like that CEO for the first time. I don't think so. I feel like it's an awkward college nerd thing that people do, but like they just don't learn how to talk to people. I think, what do you think, Carlos? To do, I think there, there's a lot um, to say about the personality that is the artist because a lot of times artists are a little, and I, and I hate to use this word, but it is what it is. Uh, they're a little awkward. Mm -hmm. They're a little not quite so comfortable with, um, with talking in a group. Mm -hmm. um, they're introverted and all this stuff, right? And so <clears throat> when they go in to meet a stranger, let's just talk a normal person. Um, you go to meet a stranger and you're going to be a little awkward. You're going to be a little nervous. So now let's add the, the, um, the pressure, I guess, or the importance of who that person is. Mm. Right. Yeah. Um, so now all of a sudden you're already nervous and you're just talking to a normal uh, uh, artist now add the pressures of, of, you know, say a John Lasseter or something. Now you're going right. to have all kinds of nerves building up and everything. And let me tell you, <laughs> rule of thumb, it, it's like this. In, in baseball, if you're pitching, no one can hit the home run that you don't pitch. Does that make sense? So if you're, <laughs> if there's someone on, yeah. you, you just said, or even if there's no one there, you know, you, you, you step off the mound and you go and catch your breath and then you come back and then you get yourself ready because, because professional pitchers get, get nervous too. And if you're really nervous and you throw the ball and you, and you accidentally throw the ball and it kind of gets away from you, whatever, and the guy hits a home run. Like imagine being that nervous pitcher, but instead of throwing that nervous ball, you stepped off and you caught your breath, right? So right. that's the analogy to that, that I always go to in my head where when I go to meet someone, I might be nervous, but instead of throwing a bunch of verbal vomit out there, uh, I'd rather, I'd rather, you know, catch my breath, just take a step back because I'd rather have someone be like, wow, Carlos, <laughs> Carlos is a quiet guy. He seems like a nice guy rather than me come out and say a bunch of stupid stuff and people be like, Ooh, you're, you're kind of an asshole. <laughs> Does that make sense? Have you ever, when, have you ever met someone that well, you admire deeply and you uh like you're so excited to meet them or to say something to them that um, or it didn't didn't go the way that you wanted yeah 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 that's the cool thing about being on this podcast because then like hopefully when people meet me out in the on out in the public they know that i have a tendency to say dumb shit <laughs> 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 him right oh you're you're looking you're nervous you must be nervous because you just said something stupid <laughs> um and i can always take things back or explain myself a little clearer um whereas if I'm in public and you have that initial meeting and you're like uh hey john lasser i love your socks and he's like that, <laughs> that's what you came out is that <laughs> like, okay sock boy Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's just like you're just kind of taking taking the taking the deep breath and kind of doing your homework. You know, I think a lot of people go into it blind, also, Daniel. Too, you know, if you're trying to uh, talk to certain people, like you know, they usually can go on CT Insider or a site like that for insert whatever con and figure out who's tabling and who's going to be there already. You know, so kind of have some background. I think artists. You know, some artists love flattery. You don't have to go crazy with it, but if you kind of know what they're what they're all about, and don't you know, that. you can you can like so, find you can find. So some Charlie, what if, when you're when you're meeting someone, you're talking to someone, like when you're talking just casually, mm -hmm. 
what is your go-to topic that has nothing to do with work? What is your icebreaker topic? Uh, I, see, that's the point. I don't, I don't have them like memorized. I just talk normally. Like literally, I don't. At yeah. this point, I've never had it memorized. Like it's always something that I can, I can pull from either something that just happened or um, one right. of the work commenting on the work that they have. If, if I'm going to an artist that has a table and stuff like that. Um, I'm a comic book nerd, so like if they have any kind of fan art, you know, and find a common ground, I'll say some kind of, you know, something about that that, you know, if you didn't read the comic books, you wouldn't really know. And nine times out of ten, artists are the best researchers of their of their work. So they're like, oh, yeah, I love that issue or whatever. And, you know, and that's, that's how it starts. You're in the you know? yeah. You know, it's just, it's just, I'm just talking normally, you know. Um, and then, or, you know, I've gotten, I've had, I've gotten into, you know, not arguments, but I've gotten into like argue, arguments like that because of my comic book knowledge. You're like, oh, I don't really think this is good. But then you, people remember that banter because they're like, no, this dude is right. like this. I'm like, no, you got to remember they're like this because of this. But I usually always turn it into right. some type of a joke because I'm a little bit of a jokester and I can be sarcastic. So right. most of the time I can, it can come off. It's not coming off as like, I've never been in something where like, well, fine then. And I walk away. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> that doesn't work out. No, it's never been that that case but literally you know if it's something where like <laughs> what'd you say you written this god i'm out of here <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> get you dude no no like so i've never been that but like i have been to places where like like siggraph like in um oh four i went to siggraph to as a as a fresh grad you know spent all my money to get there and then um was sleeping on you know hotel floors and stuff like that with a bunch of other people in, in a hotel room. Um, so with that being said, I, I did, I have gone and just talked professionally, you know, hi, my name is Charlie B. Williams or whatever. I'm, uh, I'm looking to do this, this, and this. Hey, can you check out my stuff real quick, man? And then uh, usually, usually just something like that will open the door and let them give you a critique and talk. And then a conversation straightforward. Yeah. A conversation starts that way. But like, you know, I'm, I, am I like showing them my whole thing? Am I selling them every page in my book? No, I want them to look, and I want them to talk more. You know, I want them to talk about themselves also. So if they're looking at my artwork, I would have said, I would have said, so like, how did you get started, or like, uh, what are some some tips you you have for me based off of this environmental stuff that you see? You know, that I because I've because I've done some research and I've seen that this happens. This, what is yours? And then shut up, and then I just let them talk. And next thing you know, they're talking for 15 minutes about themselves. The people like to talk about themselves. Right. You know? <laughs> I know I do. And that's, that, goes, that goes for not only people that you're meeting at these trade shows, but that's, that's a really good tip that I give, that I used to give my, uh, my students at the school was no matter what, if you can get the other person to talk about themselves, um, they're going to remember you more. They're going to mm-hmm. have a better feeling about yep. talking to you and meeting you. And It's sort of like dating, man. It's sort of like going... Exactly. <laughs> a little bit, but it's, that scares me. <laughs> your, your, your verbiage right now. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, a little, a little bit, a little bit damn. It's okay, that's okay. Yeah, um, no, I've done that actually. I've done that actually for my first job, though, Daniel, when I got my first job at EA Chicago. I was I was the most nervous I've ever been. Um, I had survived the my very first. It took all day. They told me to be there at like nine o'clock, and that so I can do some paperwork and that for the interview, and then that my interview will start at nine at ten o'clock promptly. So I'll be there around nine thirty. I sat in the uh, waiting room for a half an hour because no video game studio ever starts at nine thirty. Most of it starts that you have to be there at ten in the between ten and four your core hours, you know. So I sat there like sweating bullets for the first half an hour in my little sweater, <laughs> and, stewing, and, like, stewing. and people are like rolling in like, oh, "Hey, what's up, dude?" <laughs> you know, I'm like, "Oh, cool, hey." Um, and uh, the first the first round was with the the two leads, you know, all crammed into their office, and then the second round was with the art director. And the art director I was more scared of because art, they're art directors, you know. And um, literally, I did that. Like when I came came into his office, he had my portfolio already up on his computer. 
come on in, Charlie. I'm already looking at your work. All right, cool. And I, that's why I say I say stuff like that because I think it's like my safety mechanism. I'm like, cool, man. Cool, man. I'll sit down. Cool. Um, and then uh, he's like, all right, cool, cool. And and then uh, he's looking at my work. I looked over across the room and I saw that he had a bunch of comic books and I literally quit the comic books right away. I was like, oh, yeah. and I made one comment about the right book. I think it was Joe Magera or something like that. And yo, that opened up Pandora's gates because for the next 20 minutes, he talked about that and everything else under the sun while asking me random questions here and there yeah. and looking. Dude, yeah. he talked so much that the HR lady came <laughs> and was like, are, are, are you done? And he was like, oh, <laughs> no lie. Darren, you're amazing for that. If I can get you on the show, shout out to Darren. To Darren, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna reach out to you this week so I can, so that I can corroborate my story. He probably doesn't even realize that's what happened. But like we talked about comic books. Sure enough, we got a comic book game. Uh, year and a half later, guess what game I got stuck on? <laughs> I got stuck on a Marvel game, a Marvel game that we were, that we were doing at the time. But like, I bet you because he remembered, he remembered our, our conversations. Because I had some, because then when, when they start talking about it, I don't just do surface level, like I like X-Men stuff. I can like, I can like go back and forth. And it was like, you know, that part of the interview went really, really fast, you know? Now, right. fast forward to right. the end of the interview, it was the hardest interview I still have yet had. <laughs> with uh, Kudo Tetsunoda, uh, where he brought me on the other side of his desk and then set me right there and asked me, do I mind if he transcribed everything I said? So yeah. as I'm talking, he's writing down, which I feel like is some weird manager. I, have, I, I mean, I manage people now at work too. I have not found this yet, but I want to know what psychological book he read where like you put a junior artist through something where he, you're asking him really, really tough questions about what he would do if an art lead told you to do something and then a, and an art director came by your desk and told you to do something different and then paused, waited for my answer. And as soon as I started talking, all you hear is scribble, scribble, scribble. <laughs> and, and, and then he stopped. And then he stopped and was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Me typing, does that freak you out? I'm like, no, I'm good. Okay, cool. <laughs> and, and, then, for a four. <laughs> and kept going. I was like, um, okay. First of all, it was one of those nice desks too, nice wood right. desks. Like, like it felt weird if somebody came in and and saw the interview and saw that me huddled next to him on the other side of his desk. You know, it was. <laughs> it has to be something psychological. I, I wish, kudo, you're another person I'm gonna reach out to because I I would like to talk to you about my first interview ever. <laughs> so I'm gonna sing you this episode. I can tell you. So you can tell I'm, me. I'm, I'm so I'm so terrible I'm so terrible at media or famous people or whatnot. Like I was working on um, I was working on uh, Zodiac, the David Fincher movie, uh, and uh -huh. it was going great. And this is over at the digital domain, and it was a very small, a two-person matte painting crew, and uh, me and um, uh, Wei Zhang, who's uh, the lead, and he was tremendous. He was amazing. And, um, and Fincher was super happy with everything that was coming out of DD and he came by and he's just like, I want to meet the Matt guys. I want to meet these dudes. And cause Fincher had done himself, I guess, like, you know, for what, Return of the Jedi or whatever he was working on. Mm -hmm. So he comes over, I had been, you know, in the room with him, like with 60 other people, like a few times. Um, but I didn't ever met the dude, my favorite directors is totally great. And he comes in. Uh, he's like, Daniel, I just want to say, man, great, great work with the Max. That's fantastic. I just want to come in and say hi. And he reaches out and shakes my hand. I shake his hand. And the first thing I say to him is, hands there, man. That's huge. Huge <laughs> boss. <laughs> yeah, he's awesome. like, uh, yeah, we're out of here. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> DJ grabs the needle. <laughs> <laughs> that was I don't even I don't think I need to say it. That was the last time I talked to David Fisher. I worked with him many I worked for him many other times, but uh, that was the last time I was allowed to speak to him. <laughs> so yeah, I'm 
<laughs> not always going to be a fantastic conversation. Like there's some people that, that, Charlie and I are cut from the same cloth. We can we can talk to pretty much whomever, pretty much wherever. Um, that's, that's why, why we I, get weird people that that come and find us every yeah. time we hang out. It's it's ridiculous. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm telling you. So and we're you know, I like to think I like to think I'm somewhat knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. um, but there's just some times where where. The person you're trying to reach, is they're either going through some things in their personal life or maybe they just don't have... Yeah, there's no way to know. There's no right. way to know. And sometimes you're just like, well, there goes that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all you can say. Just yeah. say you know, in, in our industry, like, look at I'm wearing Star Wars t-shirt. Uh, Char <laughs> Charlie, let me see. What's Charlie wearing? Charlie is wearing an Adidas tracksuit. Mm -hmm. So I'd go up to Charlie and be like, yeah, uh, uh, the tracksuit. Like, what are we, in the 70s? Yeah. Ah. Trying to figure out, like, how many people in our industry always have a T-shirt that has something on it? Yeah, the Cubans don't wear light blue. <laughs> 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 that's a really good point though that's a really good point because, like, i think that like you, people use these things i mean like you use this to sort of advertise what to talk about right i mean like you you can like I, i'm gonna wear t-shirts about stuff that i love and you get to see you go to these conventions and you go to like uh meet folks like they're always almost always like expressing themselves non-verbally somehow right yeah and, uh, yeah uh, and, and so you're like a little bit of a clue, you know, just like, you know, you, you can tell if you have something to talk about with this dude. If he's wearing a, you know, a teal Star Wars t-shirt, like, obviously, I'm going to must be, weird. be able to yeah. chat with this dude. Like, <laughs> oh. oh. I guess it's more baby blue. That's enough out of you both. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, though? But I, I, I still, I tend to I want to tell That's people who you all are, stuff, though. You know, because I feel like <laughs> the, the, unpolished artists is writing down like we're like we're pickup artists on YouTube and they're like okay cool stare at the shirt and figure out what the way say <laughs> you know and I, I don't want to just, <laughs> how can how can you convey natural yeah, conversation no, no, I, like, I don't mean that you would have with your friend way. you know I don't mean it that way I mean, but, but like, like I know but the, you like know, if some... you see someone it's sort of like if, if you see someone wearing a Star Wars shirt and you like yeah. Star Wars like they've already said the first part of that conversation if you True. have an opinion about Star Wars don't exactly. feel bad about leaping in on that. Yeah, yeah, a good opinion. Be Don't come off of weird that, about it. It's that emo artist dude that's like going to talk about how you know <laughs> episodes such and such and such on Jar Jar Binks is horrible. Blah blah blah, blase blase. I don't think that's the way you <laughs> you start. Don't do that, yeah, dude. Don't get my me started argument. on Return of the Jedi. It's over. And he'd be like, "Yo, I, I designed that." Like I can. <laughs> And my argument to that is you probably don't want to talk to him anyway. So. <laughs> That's probably true. I'll be like, oh, man, I'm going to go talk to him. Yeah. On, he's over there. Because I've seen people like go into like their heartfelt, heated opinion about, you know, Lord of the Rings off of somebody's fan art of Legolas and lost that artist at his booth like just watching the people walk by because that dude's now in his in his feelings. <laughs> you know the guy. Yeah, stands true. dead center at the yeah. table, right? Has commands the artist's attention. And the artist is looking behind him because he's watching all the other people walk by because it, obviously this dude's, you know, having a intense conversation and the artist just wants to sell stuff <laughs> you know right it's, it's, uh, right i mean like i can only imagine like if you're mike mignola right and you're looking down oh, the line yes. of, like 25 guys that want to talk to you and just like oh man here it comes i can see yeah. that agitated fella right there mm -hmm. <laughs> i don't know four my mom took it away <laughs> you, just, you just gotta pick you just gotta pick your battles guys be yourself and pick your battles and and, and be cognizant of like people around you you know, um, like Car Carlos, you gotta be that nice guy. Go ahead, Daniel. Daniel has high quality internet, everyone. So mm -hmm. if there's a pause from time to time, that's thinking. Daniel lives in Cuba. Uh, <laughs> they have rolling brownouts there. 
Daniel? Uh, yes, sir. What were you going to say? There we go. Say, Carlos, if, uh, if you were that guy, if you were going to bring too much to the table, the topic that would you get you the hottest? Ooh. What's the topic that would get me the hottest? I don't know where this is going. Uh, hottest bad. Hot, hottest meaning angry. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, oh, of course. I'm going to try to be an <laughs> adult. Um, <laughs> what, would, what would upset me to the point where I would ask someone to... Ooh, is there one? I, I, I don't think so. If there is, I, well, politics. Like if you, I I like talking politics. I within you know, the I, thing of a con. Within I the, yeah. For as much as I, for as much as I think, um, Donald Trump, I, he is what he is. Like I, it, good, bad, or indifferent, I really don't care. I I enjoy the fact that he's running for office. Um, it just kind of, it's, it's blowing the doors off of the status quo. If not refueling every comedian across the entire country, if mm -hmm. not the world. So, so you, you um, welcome that there's a certain kind of, there's a, there's a certain kind of populism that's happening, which is interesting, right? Yeah. So even, even if it's a negative topic, like, po uh, politics or, you know, Donald Trump or all this stuff. I still find, you know, I like getting to know people and their opinions and everything. Now, the one part that I do know I would, that would set me off is um, intolerant ignorance. Mm -hmm. um, and, this, and this goes for both sides of this argument, but let me just start it out this way. Um, when you talk to rich white people and rich white people talk about how poor black people can do it better. <laughs> and I think to myself, you've never been a poor black person, so you don't know what they're going through. Right. Mm -hmm. And so even in the beginning of the conversation, I'll, you know, I'll try to maneuver my way through that conversation. But if it gets to the point That's where you don't have flexibility in your uh, points of view. And I'm trying to work yeah. with you to have an, 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 um, an intelligent conversation. Then that's where I start to lose patience, but I would probably call it quits before right. Right. my, my temper or anything, because I know, right. I know that at the end of the day, um, like let's say you are tabling at some place and some dude does come and say the wrong thing and you snap on that guy, everyone who's in that line to buy your book is going to see you snapping on that guy. And there might be a couple of people that, are like, well, yeah, he deserves it, but there's going to be a lot of people that are like, dude, you're not who I thought you were. You're not that cool anymore. You're kind of mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was going to tell you this but, story. No, I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's a fair thing to say. Like, I mean, like yeah. with anything, whether it's politics or with movies or comics or whatever it is, like people are going to have different opinions than you. And you're going to have to, if you want to talk about stuff, you got to be flexible. Like that's, right. that's how it works. And yeah. If you want to enter into a conversation with somebody, that's with the agreement mm -hmm. that they may disagree with you, and it's a conversation. That's the whole yeah. idea. And if you're just out there to sort of like say stuff and just blast stuff into people's ears, then that's not useful at all, and it's a waste of your own time. Right, right. That's totally, that's totally right. And I think that's why, that's why I think I, I preference the whole part of, you know, you're able to say whatever that is. Yeah. conversation so that like you guys, you, you know, don't, don't go in it trying to figure out subjects to tell people, but more so like kind of what comes up, you know, cause I think you can sure. get into that space. If you don't, if you have pre-planned things, you'd be like an interviewer. So I yeah. want to talk to you about politics first, then the effect <laughs> of the black man's plight, you know, like <laughs> exactly. 
<laughs> You're generally talking to someone who has spent the majority of their life or at least a few years before that conversation happens. They've spent that time researching and trying to validate their idea, right? So if you go into a conversation with someone that's just going to hit you with the facts that they have, and they're not going to listen to the facts or opinions that you have, yeah. anything that you do is not going to, and this is, this goes for Facebook conversations and everything. Like everyone's real quick to get all worked up in a lather about, uh, you know, Hillary said this and Donald said that and all this other stuff. And you have, you have groups of people that are cemented in their views that I doubt that that one Facebook post is going to change their mind. It never does. It never yeah. does. Right. So that's why the, the, my style of conversation is let's talk about different topics, but let's take a look at different views and investigate. For me, it's right. more of an investigation than it is a let's just throw facts at each other. Right. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're just going to come and uh, if, for example, this is, this is really fun. Um, a lot of my family members are very hardcore religious and mm -hmm. you know, they're quick to take the Bible and throw the Bible. And I don't, I don't mind it. I kind of know my way around too, but you know, there's also like, history books and science books and there's a lot of other stuff that whoever wrote that bible didn't have the science and the information that we have currently so yes it's a really cool book and all that stuff but there's topics and they're like <laughs> that that i just i'm not supposed to eat bacon but man i really love bacon you know, <laughs> nothing, there's nothing you can tell me that. It's until my doctor says. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, until my doctor tells me. But yeah, anyway, even, even religion. I'll talk religion with whomever. I don't even care. But you can't come to me in this just staunch stance and you're just going to bombard me with all the stuff that you learned. That's not good conversation, you know. Yeah. Um, and, and going back to, you know, tabling at a different conference or whatever, if you, um, if there's a comic book and everyone knows this guy too, this guy is going to walk up and be like, well, you know, that would never happen because the, uh, the gravitational forces that pull you around a balloon were never going to be as powerful as the spectrum of it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> at, what point did breaks. at what point did entertainment just not become entertaining for you? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, and that's what you want to avoid. Yeah. Have a conversation. Get to know each other. And be, mm -hmm. be flexible. Have a conversation. I mean, I have to admit, I do have certain triggers or conversations that I need to avoid. <laughs> <laughs> They have triggers. Oh gosh, you said it. I have to respond. What are they? What are some? What are the, some of the things that we should? I'll get heated. But once that comes up, I, that's out. <laughs> I tap out. Sorry, I said the thing about gravity. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. I know. Space travel and time travel are the same thing. I know. It's awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, so so one of the topics that that uh, my friends always gave me a, a hard time about when we were in school. Um, I was a big Mac guy. So sorry. Pretty much, pretty much everyone else was a Windows person. <laughs> Sound like amazing people. My way, I didn't beat anyone up or anything, or no one beat me up either, or uh, for that matter. Yeah. But uh, both Microsoft and Apple did uh, did keynotes. It's a event filled week. I know. On both sides, right? 
<laughs> and I got to say, <laughs> the shifting of power has happened. It's, yeah. It's 2016, and it took, you want to say 10 years? Will we, can we say 10 or 15? How far back will we want to say this reign has been in terms of innovation from either company, but one dominating the other for a good amount of time? And I feel like the tables have shifted yeah. a different direction. Because yeah, it's easy to say it, it, the flip from the flip from Microsoft to Apple, the innovation happened in the late 90s i would say right when ipod steve jobs yeah steve jobs came back on as ceo of apple he started making some really neat computers and then he came out with the ipod start selling a portable hard drive as a as a, as a music system music player <laughs> And then people realized, or well, I realized really early, that that portal, that hard drive I can have on my desk, too expensive. I'm gonna go buy that $400 iPod and get that nice. What is it? Was it 10 gig? The time? How, how many gigs was that? Was it like I still have it around here somewhere. The originals. Yeah. How much was it? How many? There were. That was like unheard of. People were walking around with portable hard drives. They didn't even know it. All right, let's see. Fact checking. Please hold. Fact checks. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually have one of these. I have one uh, with it still has music on it. Yeah. So this is my archive. This is my archiver. Twenty two thousand one. It's probably some two thousand one, yeah. Mm -hmm. By by two thousand four, that one. Yeah, I had the and they're working at EA and then using that iPod and doubling of it as a hard drive. Yeah, I was doing that too because I had the um, my uh, my jazz discs kept corrupting. <laughs> so, I'm just gonna put okay, so it looks like uh, Jobs announced its Mac compatible product with a five gig hard drive Yo. puts a thousand songs in your pocket, five gigs. Back in two thousand four, <laughs> that's 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 back in two thousand one. Oh, two thousand one, even more, like even more so back then. By yeah. far, so that means by by two thousand four, that was like MP3s were, MP3s were, <laughs> yeah. MP3s were yeah. like five hundred megabytes a piece. Yo, you know how many MP3s you could put on one of the, the original dudes were having two thousand. You know, like yeah, yeah, FF files, aren't they? Right, and if they compressed them right, like so, say you were the hipsters that were like compressing them good. They were using uh, what's the other program, like uh, Winamp and all the other ones, and they're like, they're like taking their whole libraries off of that and putting them onto their iPod, so they had like four thousand songs, <laughs> you know, and then somehow being able to ring them so they still worked with iTunes and Winamp, you know, like all those weird like hipster things you used to be have to be able to do because the file formats were weird. Yeah, like, like nostalgia is just rolling over Carlos. <laughs> you know, I remember, innovative. Like, there's there's people out there that they're just not even gonna know the struggles. Oh, yeah, they're not gonna know. Remember it, when it was cool to like have a have Winamp and like like see this is maybe a, I'm a PC dude, but Winamp was like that cool like oh you have that cool visualization on your computer oh no that's my that's my music player and it, that's where i keep all my music. and it's all organized so, yeah. <laughs> and the metadata all was correct so that the so that, so that well, i sound like a hipster just talking about it so that all the song titles come up correctly <laughs> and then long comes itunes <laughs> innovation right they had like because I guess you could just say iPods innovative, right? Those right. different types of like i iMacs, you know. I bought one for college, you know. Mm -hmm. Like my the internship convinced my mom to buy me an iMac, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so I had one of the like a little, uh, what is it, the graphite color one back in it, back in, it, in my dorm room, right? And then you had the iPods, and then you still had the, then you start getting the um. The nice white MacBooks, 
and stuff like that. iTunes was coming out too, so there was software that was being innovative, you know, and that just kept getting better and better, you know. So like the process of like Apple banging out stuff each year, and even if they didn't bring out a new fancy like piece of hardware, that software was changing the way people did things. Did things on their on both their PCs and their Macs, not just for Mac users. Uh, Mac users is a different type of cult, but still PC users were benefiting those people that were progressive and wanted to and wanted to use some of those things. Right. And then they dropped that phone. Yeah. And and I I just and it's funny because I, right now I work with a couple guys that used to be um, engineers at Apple. And one of them, he and I always get into different heated debates. And he's, he, he was somewhat yelling at me. Is he still def- so he still defends it because he loves Oh, he's the love is strong. He's the opposite. He's like, oh. what have they done? They don't, they don't innovate anymore and all this other stuff. And I was like, dude, you're just hating on them because they, because you don't work there anymore. He, he actually quit on them, whatever. But um, I'm like, you're just, you're just a hater because you don't yeah. work there anymore and you want to see behind the curtain and stuff. And, and it's killing you that you don't and all this stuff. He's like, name one thing. I was like, mm, Apple Pencil. He's like, everyone else has a, something to the effect of Apple Pencil. Look at the surface and look at look at what Wacom is doing and all this stuff. And I'm like, I'm like, shut up, dude. Like you're dumb. And that's how <laughs> I end my conversations because it sucks <laughs> to find out that he was right. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was excited because today was going to be that day that they announced some really cool stuff. <coughs> and I started seeing things like. Um, that video that I shared with you where the guy was using his Apple pencil, mm-hmm. it was you know, probably way more fan fiction right. than, uh, than any, than anything else. But um, he was using his Apple pencil on the, on the mouse trackpad and he was, you know, Oh, well, how cool would it be if we did like this and all this other stuff? And then this little LED strip or whatever the hell it is up on top that take over the function keys. And depending on the software that you're running, that strip then changes and it's multi-touch capable, blah, 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 blah. All this, all this really cool stuff. So they had this big, huge announcement. Right. And basically, they, they announced some updates to Apple TV, which is actually pretty cool because you're going to be able to use the Apple TV to stream, you know, live, live events like sporting events and news event and uh, your local news and all this stuff. Now the Apple's own thing, or is it powered by Amazon or Netflix or something like that? Um, no, all of you, you know how like CBS has their own app, right? Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, CBS is going to be at base. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, yeah, serve their own content, and you know Netflix will be doing the same thing, and blah blah blah. So basically, the Apple TV is just going to be a um, platform, yeah, like a, a um, aggregator, right? So you're going to be able to tell Siri, "Hey Siri, I want to watch Big Bang Theory," and then she's going to find who's playing it, who has it, who has it running live who has it running recorded and all that stuff. Okay. Okay, cool. So that's, that's good. So we, we, we give a slot. One thumbs up, right? For, <laughs> for Apple TV, right? But it's kind of like Roku is doing that. And I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> I like <Okay>. crap. <laughs> um, you know, even sling, if you haven't seen, if you haven't seen what uh, sling media is doing lately, Sling became popular because they had this device that you plugged into your cable box mm-hmm. and then that would then stream to wherever you are on your laptop. You'd be able to oh. go on your computer, log into your Sling box, 
and then you'd be able to change the channel and watch TV that way, right? Okay. So we found out about that because when I was in Chicago, I was working at this small company and um, we were trying to get this software out, but there was like mad snow and everyone, everyone was spending way more time trying to get to work than they were being at work. Yeah, yeah. And then we had to work over the weekend. So we, what we ended up doing is uh, we, got, we got the project manager to buy us a sling box. Dude went and hooked it up to his cable. And then while we were working, we were able to watch the Bears game on Sundays and stuff. So um, that's what happens when you overwork. Um, so now even they are having their own streaming services and all kinds of stuff. And you can... Wow. So it's like Roku and Sling and, and, and now Apple is finally, finally catching up. Uh, one of the what other things... What else they do? Yeah, they have to have something else. Let's see. Hmm? So what else they do then? Like They have to have something. What else did they announce? Uh, as far as Apple TV goes, Minecraft is coming to... Okay, you're losing me really quickly. Let's find something else innovative. <laughs> Minecraft. The only other really thing, the only other really cool thing that they did is they announced a new MacBook Pro. Okay. Um, they have a 13-inch, a 15-inch. They ha- they currently have a 12-inch that they're just going to boost uh, the processor. Mm-hmm. So that's going to be the low end. And then you have the you have f- four selections of MacBook Pros, right? You have your 12-inch, which is for you know like your spreadsheet makers and right, right. Like your general internet, internet users and emails. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, and then you have your 13-inch with the regular function keys that is a little more powerful, a little bigger. Okay. Um, but the but it doesn't have the fancy keys. You're stuck with the the regular the, function keys. For the purists, they just want uh, that. No, is for it? someone who wants uh for someone who wants a Mac, a 13-inch Mac, but doesn't want to pay for the the extra the, the, the new stuff. Yeah. Then get the get the cool new stuff, right? Okay. So then the 13 and then the 15 inch is um, the faster, most thin MacBook Pros that we've ever made. And instead of the function keys on top, there's a LED strip that's going to let you move and slide things. And right, right. yet again, and they had a presentation with someone from Adobe. She was showing how she can do a lot of functions in Photoshop just from the strip, the touch. Wow. Calling it, I believe that. Okay. So the, the, there you go. <laughs> and that changes with the programs that turn on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it's more. But it's no buttons. You're, you're on, actually. You're, you're, on you're your, actually uh, glass or whatever. The what? There's no buttons though. It's actually like a clear yeah. strip, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's like a touch the lights, the lights up right um, yeah and, and what one of the cool things is what they at the end of the strip they have the power button mm-hmm. and if you lay your finger on the power button it turns on um, your computer uh, uh, hmm? uh, robot voice uh your finger there it increases your bandwidth to your internet mm-hmm. no we'll try jay again in a second yeah. what are you saying carlos uh, if you lay your finger on the power button mm-hmm. it'll actually scan your finger um and it's just like getting into your into your iphone oh so it's like the record okay cool okay it has finger recognition now the neat thing you trying to make it a little a little cooler right Say I put my finger and I log in, right? Mm-hmm. I'm able to use a computer. So then let's say, Charlie, you come and you put your finger. Right. What to do? And switch everything to your computer. Oh. So the, the computer, you know how you have different accounts on your on your Right, computer? right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. It, it would do that. It would flip mm-hmm. over to your computer. Does that make sense? Oh, that's, to yeah, your yeah, that's kind of cool. Your version of the computer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Go ahead, Daniel. Daniel, are you there? No. Internet's uh, 
bounding and gagging uh, Daniel right now. We'll, just, we'll see if he comes back in a second. No, I kind I kind of like that. Then, like, so then, what did it save your profile or something like that? Kind of similar to Chrome on the cloud, so that if you do log into somebody else's stuff, you can have some of your same key features or whatever. Right. Like bookmarks, stuff like that. Okay. I. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to process. And what's the price point? Uh, I think the cheapest one. Hang on. Let's see. I'm checking. I think I want to say the cheapest one was like around twelve hundred dollars. Mm. Okay. Womp, womp, womp. <laughs> so, such a genius, la la la. Right, hang on, it's not, I'm going to go to buy. Okay, so we have the 13 inch MacBook Pro. The cheapest one is basically fifteen hundred dollars. The next mm -hmm. one up is eighteen hundred, and then the next Are one, the highest. Some of that right now. Hmm? What was that? Oh, damn! Can you can you hear me now? Is that uh, am I back on? You sound like a super drunk robot. Yeah. You had a robot voice is like innovated into something new and amazing. <laughs> 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 like, like, <laughs> yo, it's like robot voice, but like, yeah, drunk and. <laughs> It's like, yeah, we can hear you, but it's very, very slow. Just a robot voice. Oh, it's killing you. It's killing you. There it is. There we go. I think you're, I think you're back. Everything turned down. Yeah. It's, uh, I think your internet's being throttled a little bit, but yeah, your robot voice sounded drunk and curious. Yeah, so, so I think that's, that's, a new, that's a new record for us. <laughs> but, um, you said you could use use one of those uh one of those new MacBooks right now, Daniel. You can use one of those AOL discs. <laughs> <laughs> it's net zero, man. It was always faster. <laughs> Did I ever tell you that I worked for the guy who invented net zero? <laughs> no. Yeah, I'll tell you Did that. Do you have free internet? It's disheartening. I bet that so uh, while Daniel's uh, internet catches up. Um, so the biggest 13 inch you can get is uh, is uh, basically two thousand dollars, and then for the 15 inch you can get one. The smaller one or the the more affordable one, I guess we can say, is twenty four hundred, and then the biggest one is uh, twenty eight hundred. But I'm sure you can bump things up. Uh, well, that seems high, obviously, but yeah, it's not high as it used to be, right? No, no, so they've kind of come down to their credit. Yeah, I four remember. grand, I remember something like that. I remember. Approaching, approaching that plus tax, like after tax, they would never say it's like two ninety nine. But like, really, okay, here we are. Right. One more time, this is the lowest I can go. <laughs> ah, you Welcome good. back. Yes. I am a it works. <laughs> yes, you are. Yes, you, you, just, you are a drunk, curious robot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's the show title. <laughs> drunk, curious robot. Um, say something else, Daniel. No. No. Yeah, so I think I think they're like 
I think I think that's like a lot more attainable. You know, it's not crazy. I remember decking one out back. I don't know. My is from. Is that better? <laughs> that's that's my natural voice. Okay. <laughs> cool. Cool. You're back. Cool. <laughs> Oh yeah, Lord. Yeah, this poor little thing. Like this, I, this is one step on top that I bought out of a vending machine. <laughs> You're on top of a vending machine. I think he said he bought his laptop out of a vending machine. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So he probably could take advantage of these these new ones that have come out. Yeah, we'll send you the links. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, so, yeah. basically, so basically, you said, yeah. So basically, they're, they're trying to be more competitive, right? But not enough, not enough really there to make people happy. I would say. Um, I mean, you like Mac, so me, what do you let think? Me, let me let me answer that by saying, I also went back. I watched the Apple keynote live and i went back and watched the recording of the windows or of the microsoft keynote mm -hmm. yeah because i have stuff ready for that one mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <Santa> like a... <laughs> 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 i was i was listening to all the dialogue listening all with uh, many opinions and all good <laughs> here you know whatever you're doing keep doing that And whatever you're doing now, stop doing that. <laughs> it's literally the exchange. And then when the internet data goes to Daniel. I know. We're going to have to from, jump. From a response, Almost. it just gets messed up. You know, in the background, like it's a printer from 1987. <laughs> <laughs> so hurry before we crash your internet. It's true. <laughs> you there? Okay. Um. I, I, uh, so it. So basically, they had they announced updates to Apple TV, and then they announced. Um. Minecraft coming onto Apple TV and they announced the MacBook Pros. Right. Okay. I'm going to go down. I'm just going to shoot down the, uh, the list of things that I noticed while I was watching the, the Microsoft thing. And then I'll let you okay. do what you came to do. Okay. So... The <laughs> So, I love that. Okay. So remember, I said they announced new MacBook Pros. Right. Update to existing Apple TV. And right. Microsoft came is coming to Apple TV. So okay. Microsoft announced Windows 10 Creators Update. Windows Capture 3D. MS Paint is now Paint 3D. Mm-hmm. They announced uh, a new kind of, it's almost like a social networking thing, or not even social network, but like a social sharing thing. It's called Remix 3D. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, you can build something in Minecraft and then 3D print it from the, I believe, from the Xbox. Um, or is it from okay. the app, the app that they made? Yeah, I, I think from the app, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, they're partnering with SketchUp. Mm. So you see the theme that's happening, right? Mm -hmm. They announced that you're able to bring in 3D objects into PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. uh, there's updates to the HoloLens, which we're going to talk about here mm -hmm. in a little bit. Uh, there's an update. There's an Xbox One S now. Mm -hmm. uh, New Surface Book 
So their laptop is an amazing book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now has 16 hours of battery life. I7. The new the new uh, Surface what did they call it? Surface Studio. Or Surface um, yeah, Surface Studio. And the new Surface Dial. That's all we're going to get uh, go, Charlie, because I'm going to get excited. So, yeah, so all that that Carlos just announced, Microsoft announced. Thus, I said when we first started, the shifting of power in terms of innovation, at least for the tail end of 2016. Um, seems like the this week's uh, Medal of Honor goes to uh, Microsoft, you know? So with all that thing, say that. at the core of that, you know, yeah, you like that. <laughs> the core of that, you got Windows 10, right? You know, that's the current up operating system Windows is on. And all this new technology is getting rolled into what's called the Creator's Update. You know, so the Creator's Update will be arriving next spring for free. Um, and it's very focused on 3D design software and new gaming-related features. So, um, and social networking is mixed in there, too. I feel like as an artist, and since we speak to a lot of different types of artists, this is Microsoft's first time they've uh, made a ploy to market to you guys, right? Um, with the studio, Surface Studio is a direct competition to, I guess you, if you want to go there, Apple's iMac. But in my opinion, because they like to put Microsoft and Apple against each other, obviously, I see it as a direct competition to anybody that has some type of Cintiq, anybody that has some type of iP iP iPad Pro, any type of artist that would use that type of uh, peripheral to do their artwork, right? And yeah, once because when I saw that thing today, it looked like Minority Report. I was like, oh my god, that is a <laughs> game changer right there. It's insane. Yeah. 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 Welcome back, by the way. So, like, so, that, so, that's, so that's the first part, right? So let's 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 go with that first, and then you have, um, if we go to, if we move down from the Windows 10 update stuff, which is a free update, like I said, you have the Surface Book, which is an i7. It's a refreshed version, refreshed version of the old Surface Book, uh, laptop hybrid. You know the new model features an improved processor, about a 30% boost to the battery life, like like uh, Carlos said, which turned about 16. You know, and then you have. Um, a retail standard price around twenty three hundred, so twenty four hundred bucks, you know, which is attainable if you're in the market for a new, for a new thing. And I have another thing, uh, Carlos, that I don't think you've heard about this because you didn't mention it. And um, one of those, the coolest things from that whole thing was that amazing. I like to call it a jog wheel. Are they reinventing the jog wheel? Can we can we call a little bit of like consumer? I don't want to call I don't it. Know. Yes. Wheel? It's it's the new peripheral that goes with the surface. Uh, yeah, you put it right on the screen and yeah. you twist yeah. things. So things think of like an editor, Carlos. You you've seen those jog wheels, right? Like an editor, right? Yeah. Grab the mentioned. grab the grab that wheel and throw it on your screen. And say you're yeah. in Photoshop. When you put it on your screen, you turn the screen activates underneath it and becomes like the color color wheel. Yeah, you right. know, and it does different stuff. So I, I call it a jog wheel, but uh, it's called the what? It's it's the surface dial. Surface dial. They're gonna call it a dial. But I'm I'm thinking, say you're in Premiere Pro or whatever. I I, I know that stuff has to have some functionality with it. You know, <laughs> right? <laughs> like right. it's too cool. I love it that you can put it on the. It's it, that that's that's the minority report stuff for me. Like obviously, <laughs> like you know, activate. You know that region of your screen and being like, oh, cool, and then using your stylus and being like, yeah, I want green. Cool. Now let's change the, uh, you know, brightness and contrast. Okay, cool. You know, and I, I like this whole feature of, like, having this jog wheel and having your stylus in your hand and, you know, it works with your mouse or having the mouse in your hand in the, in the, in the, in the, um, in the well, dial. it makes it more, it makes it ultimately more tactile, which is, you know, as an artist, is the thing that I miss most about the transition to digital is like it like it makes right. it like a much more direct form of uh mm -hmm. like artistic expression which is wonderful you know uh, on yeah. the downside 
you know, I also got four kids, so I know that this the thing is going to turn into like yeah, a go sort of it. sticky honey covered hat on a on a on a, like a paper mache doll, or so. it's going to go right through your screen because they're going to drop. Yeah. It. <laughs> exactly. You know, but it is so. it is totally fantastic looking for I mean like for sure, and I like there there's a sort of uh, like what I what I really felt when I saw that was like there's this sort of um, it, it's sort of a a, a the crossing a Rubicon kind of point when I saw this right. thing, I was like, this thing is like, um, this felt like we were entering into something that was both amazingly high tech, but unbelievably uh, accessible and easy to use. Mm -hmm. um, and that was more that, that transformed the, um, the, the transformed the thing more like it was a, like the way you think of furniture, you know, where it's just like, this is just how you do it. Like if you were, if you were illustrating on a, uh, on a, uh, a drafting board, for instance, or if you're doing some architecture, like that's the same thing. And the same way that architects, um, you know, interact with drafting board is this, you know, it's not a novelty act. It's like, this is just the tools you use. And you just sort of like, this is just how you do it. And I think that like, that was a, there was a, there was a sort of like, there was less amazement and more sort of like acceptable comfort to me right. uh, in seeing that video. And I was really like, you know, if that, if, if that's where we're at right now, then, you know, two or three years down the road, then, you know, the novelty is gone, but the usefulness right. is finally here. And I also like what they did with the whole marketing of this, right? So Carlos, you, you went back and watched the, the, the whole, the, the keynote later, <laughs> excuse me. I was able to not watch the whole keynote later, but I was on Gizmodo and every other tech type site, you know, seeing what they were actually, you know, announcing, right? But I was able to watch Microsoft put up on YouTube a 90 second recap, a 90, 90 <laughs> second recap or whatever. They did a nice little video montage of everything. And this is from Microsoft. You know, I think more people should do that. Like, it was really nice. I got the gist of everything and got to see pieces of the, you know, with, within 90 seconds, you know, right. um, just, just for people to get a breath. Because a lot of times you just want them to know what's coming out. And you don't have time for the twenty-minute fluff in between the of you announcing your new, you know, Surface Surface tablet. Well, would, you know? would you say? Would you say, Charlie, that there's like a there's a difference in how this stuff is um, sort of put out there now? Because like, I mean, like the flavor of like this, like that video that I saw today was it's much to different. It. Yeah, exactly. Right. I mean, like, they're starting to get it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're not, starting to understand. They're starting now to the three understand. stuff I still see is a little bit of a fluff, but coming from um, if I put my professional hat on that, you know, my, as one of the uh, augmented reality creative that like does a lot of this stuff, giving people the, uh, the, um, ability to, to like use 3d objects more. And they said, um, that they're going to put, uh, that the whole 3d ad adaptation as a, as a company Microsoft over the next year, most of Microsoft's applications over the next year will include Microsoft, uh, will include the whole 3d objects and stuff like that, including Microsoft PowerPoint, uh, where you'll be able to import interactive animated 3d designs and stuff like that. And the whole 3d or not 3d printing or the 3d scanning, I would like to call it at this point, right. um, is, is going to be a big thing. So they're doing a big, huge push, the, with the with this whole three D interactive, I think it's a good push for the artists also and content right. creators. But uh, that's 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 really really cool. And all of this, get this. And here's the kicker. Uh, this is Microsoft putting on their like their thinking caps, and um, this is a new bit of news. So for this, five hundred dollars. Oh yeah, yeah, nice. This is what they're going to do. Look at this. You can't do all this those new sound effects and then go back. <laughs> ha! It's it's, it's 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 suspense. Let me do this. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> so Microsoft. It, here's another thing from Gizmodo front page. Microsoft will pay you not to use a MacBook. So oh, right. hours, be <laughs> right? Hours before. Hours before the 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 um. Mark, uh, what is it? Apple's uh, keynote, Microsoft right. came out with this laptop program that they're doing, that they're, mm -hmm. that they're rolling out. So it says Microsoft uh, trade in and trade up laptop program um, is yet another com campaign that the company wants to buy back your Apple products and they'll give you money in Microsoft points to go toward 
a new, you know, Surface Pro. So or, if you're trading, here's you're gonna, War whatever you, whichever you want. Here's War Exactly. Four, look four. at this. So look, <laughs> you can do. Let's see what. See what's. Let me, let me check I'll, here. I'll sell them my old. <laughs> you can sell them your old iPad. You can sell mm. them your iPhone Seven. You can sell them your different types of uh, MacBooks, right? So uh, if you own an iPad of any shape or size, right? <laughs> For instance, that's worth like four hundred and fifty-five dollars toward a Windows tablet, right? Holy smokes! Wow. Right? Wow. You can also trade in your iPhone Seven. Apple uh, for for five hundred and eighty bucks in Microsoft credits. That's just your phone. You can do uh, uh, and then the MacBook Pro, the MacBook Pro Retina, the MacBook Air. Um, Right. You, uh, some of them are worth 450 bucks. Now they're not doing one-to-one ratios or whatever, but it's money toward. Right. But still, right. are they? So do, yeah. Are they right. also doing um, uh, like Wacom products too? Because I'll a hey, I'll have a fire sale. <laughs> yeah, I didn't hear anything yeah. about the I Wacom. Also, look, I, I'll let you know, I have a Honda Civic 1992. If they're taking that, <laughs> I'm totally going to on that action I'm right gonna, now. Gonna, I know, right? <laughs> we're going we're gonna, we're gonna to have this link in the, sh- in the show notes, but I'm going to send this one to you guys so you can see the same thing I'm seeing right now because there's a whole list. It feels like it's like, <laughs> like you're in a swap meet. You know, so like the MacBook Air, right? The MacBook Air Retina, the MacBook Air 13-inch, the MacBook Pro, the Mac- MacBook Air 11-inch. Yeah, the MacBook right. Pro one. Uh, and because the the air is dead. the air is dead, right? The air is just dead. It's a dead line. There's a lot of them on here, right, Carlos? Now you can help me out with these. How far back they go with these? Look at this. It's the page. I'm still scrolling down. Like they're going with the old school stuff, yeah. like MacBook. Yeah. I, and let me tell you how much of a heartbreak this is. I've owned so many of these. <laughs> so oh, go to different Apple stores <laughs> and get these credits on the same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. So, like, I just got like this is this is what I'm saying is I feel like there is a because I mean ever since Steve Jobs died, there's been a uh, Apple's had a hard time sort of keeping up with its style. That's my opinion, and I feel like um, that Apple has been like their idea, their sort of um, you know like their their mindset has been trying to sell the cutting edge to the most stylish people around, right, and what Microsoft offered today was uh, something that said, like, we already know you're stylish. You know, we know that it's part of culture. We know that you're educated in all this. And uh, we're not going to try to, like, wow you with this stuff. Like, it's just, this is, this is the future you expected. And here it is. And so, like, they, they spoke with a language that was very, uh, like, it was nifty. And it was all amazing. But it was also very casual, and I felt like there's like they they came out like that was the most forefront thing that I saw was I was like they're coming out in this language that is not trying to make you part of the special people club, like they're just like the future is here. Everyone's going to be using this obviously because it's amazing. You've seen the Tom Cruise movie, and now you can do it yourself, you know. And yeah. you just go, oh my god, that's it, you know. It's a realization. It was sort of like a populist realization. Yeah. Um, because like I feel like Mac has been riding for a long time on phenomenal looking design, mm-hmm. and uh, and Microsoft has been behind the eight ball because it's so you know it's like you know this is like you watch Halt and Catch Fire. I mean this is the you know this is the fucking nerds box. This is what it but is. Then, but then Microsoft said you forget we run everything else. So like <laughs> we run everything else exactly. So, so like exactly now we just want to show you the all this innovative that we've been doing innovation that we've been doing and like we can start coming out with stuff. So oh you want it to be super thin and sleek whatever cool here it is check no out, problems. Check out yeah, this exactly. now that like check out this like augmented thing that like affects your screen and like you know, this tangible yeah. you can use in, in different programs in different ways. Like, that's cool. Like, where, where does it go next? Obviously, they need to innovate on their stylist, you know, to keep right. up with the Apple Pencil, because I do think the Apple Pencil was about the best thing they've come out with lately, right. you know, from, from, from a drawing yeah. standpoint. If they get that, it's when, once somebody does that, or once Microsoft does a version of that th- thing that has the, all the technology inside of it so that I can hold it on, on its side and 
Photoshop right, because like this is this you know, is a sort of a, a game this, changer, you know? this is this is sort of thing that I've been thinking about for a long time. Is that like what you really want if we're in terms of interactivity, whether you're talking about VR or whether you're talking about doing art or whatever the hell it is, like what you really really want to experience is no pain in the ass at all. You know, right. like you want this to you want this to be as like you want because then like for instance like my uh, my son is, you know he'll pick up uh, you know he's like nine. And he will understand things on a tablet instantaneously. Like, and there's no like the language is there. Yeah, my three year old daughter can and, use, use my phone and my tablet by herself and find by YouTube. By herself, right? Exactly. Watch, watch exactly. Stuff. Right. She scrolls and, better than I do. Like her scroll, <laughs> dude. You know, you exactly. When you first saw exactly. the scroll, you know when you first saw like Apple do your scroll, and and Steve said right. it's like after list. Yeah, my daughter does it every time. She's just she's just like. Like just scrolling yeah, it up, like it's like, like <laughs> why, why am I looking, watching a commercial now? Like she's barely touching the screen, and she's Dude, like I three. Like, literally, she's three. I feel, she's like, I feel oh. like the apes. I feel like the apes in the beginning of two thousand one. I'm just like, what? What? You can do this with a bone? I didn't understand that. Because you know, like, she'll look at it first, kind of analyze it, right? She'll look at it, right. analyze it, and be like, oh, cool. It's let's intuitive. Just scroll it up. <laughs> Yeah. And the, like the the intuitive mindset. I mean, this this is the this is the revolution that I think needs to happen. And I think that uh, that uh, Microsoft is now on the forefront of, is that the intuitive mindset doesn't make you feel special. It just right. makes things easy, right? And that's the great thing about it. Like Mac, like Macs are like high style. You're the special people. You're the designers. Don't worry, nobody has a Mac like this. This right. thing today was just like. This is the Jetsons where you wanted to live in the first place. Exactly. You know, like you, yeah. you do you don't so, want to think about this stuff. You just want it to work for the way you right. want it to work. And in any case, you know, for this week, you know, we give we give Microsoft their applause. They could drop the ball next week, but like they did really good for these <laughs> right. things that are coming out, right? And that's yes. I think that's that's really good. And I, I, I think this whole appraise like I just looked up the oldest one of the oldest uh MacBooks on here. Because they ask you, does it work? Is it working or is it not working? For a MacBook Pro, uh, a 2.4 gigahertz Core 2 Duo, you can get if it works and everything works with it. Basically, mm-hmm. if it's working, $150. You know? Oh, <laughs> you know? it smokes, dude. You know? Like, yeah. how many Crazy. old laptops do you have there, <laughs> there Carlos, that you can get working? You got I, don't at least have, I don't have any because I give all my old stuff to my family. I can't tell you how many old Mac laptops I have spread around the United Car- States. Carlos, what is the oldest computer you have? What is the oldest possible computer you uh, that you actually have? Um, I have a – what is that really old one? Uh, I think I have the original Mac. Nice. Wow. Yeah. Tower? It's that one piece, the little toaster one. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I had a, uh, I had a, uh, a uh, yeah. what do you call it? A uh, Commodore 64 forever. I had mm. one of those too. Mm. Yeah. That was amazing, dude. Yeah. Like you, you get, you get the magazine in the mail and you type in all the code, like 10 pages of code <laughs> <laughs> just to see something that kind of looked like a dude with a sword. <laughs> oh, like, yeah. dude, I was I found out how to write my name and have it repeat my name over and over again. I was like, Whoa, so you didn't want to turn that off <laughs> King of the like, world. No. And then when you put a, a semicolon in back of it, it like filled it sideways too. I was like, oh, whoa, that's can, can I like, can I ask you? I mean, just like is you know, I'm an I'm an old man now. So I mean like is it is it as weird to you as it is to me uh to have been living in the Stone Age and then suddenly see this kind of stuff you see today? Like you're just like, whoa, you know, there were rotary telephones and then there were space cars. Like, <laughs> and now there are the drives. Like, that, when, when I when, when I when I read all these, uh, this is the setup is going to be hilarious. But when I read all these old folks complaining about how well, I used to live back in the day when people would call your house and your phone was attached to the house, and and if you weren't home, then you just didn't pick up. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. I'm like, we did that too, <laughs> dude. 
<laughs> like, like in the future, it's going to be like, I remember the days when you'd get a text and you didn't want to respond to the text. So you pretended like you didn't get it for three or four hours. <laughs> <laughs> Where the coolest text you were sent is you type in some numbers and turn your phone upside down. <laughs> yeah. You type in these symbols and <laughs> send faces. Show or you had codes, <laughs> you know, 81 meant something. <laughs> while we're talking Secret about stuff, phones, man. while we're talking about phones, did you guys see that that they had a presenter who had this sand castle? Oh no, because Charlie, you saw the ninety second wrap up. Mm -hmm. Actually, oh, that's on the other computer. I have. They mentioned about it in this, in this gizmo. Listen. Thing. Yeah. This lady picked up her phone. She goes, what are, you know, like we take pictures with her and everything is all kind of like too oh. boring and stuff. She held her phone out like this and walked around the sand castle and took a 3D image of it. Yeah, scanned it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was amazing. I saw that. Yeah. She 3D scanned the, the sand castle, right? And then mm -hmm. she goes, oh, and then we can do like this. And she took the 3D sand castle. And in in Microsoft Paint, mm -hmm. they upgraded it to Paint 3D, right? So right. she had a picture of the beach. She put the 3D sandcastle on top of the beach, the picture of the beach. Okay. okay. And then she took a picture of her daughters, and she masked out the background. So it was just the two little girls. And she put that on top of the 3D castle. Right. Oh, Okay. Right? Yeah, I that see was that. mind blowing. That and then she's like, bit. "Oh, okay. take a look," and you can, and it was all kind of like three D and and stuff like that. And they sh they set it up so perfectly because then they had, then they went in and they started talking about the Oculus Rift stuff, right? So they had this right. dude come out with the goggles, right? And he was like, "Oh yeah, take a look," and I can look over here to my left, and I have the TV playing, and then I can look in front of me, and there's something else doing, and then over here on the right, there's this bookcase with icons of all the software that I use. And I could just do like this and launch Skype and right. start a Skype call with my friends using this Oculus Rift thing. He goes... Oh, was that the um, HoloLens? Yeah, the HoloLens. Okay, right. cool. So that's the augmented. And then, and then get this. He goes, I can also do this. And he waves his hand and he plops on the table next to him a hologram... Mm -hmm. of the beach picture, the 3D sandcastle, and the two little girls, yeah. all living in 3D, going through the hollow lens. Yeah. And he walked around it, and it was rotating, and he was able to... I was like, I'm done. Dude, yeah, seriously. We, got, we have two hollow lenses at work. Like, next time you come to Chicago, you have to come to my work so I can have you sit there and try it for a couple. It's pretty good that they that Microsoft has went the opposite direction of VR and went to this holographic, you know. Yeah, they're doing all AR stuff, stuff right? They're doing all the AR stuff instead. Right. And there, but there's there's talk even in the articles I was reading that like there's supposed to be ways where they're supposed to be able to start to track what you're doing with the with the Hololens with VR and stuff like that too. Which now they're trying to meld the two together, you know, right. um, from from all the talk in the last couple of days. I'm just like. That's uh, some game changing stuff. You know, that's that's pretty cool, pretty cool what they're doing. Trying to do. But yeah, the no, is really, really cool. I just can't wait for people jump on it more. You know, people still don't know quite like we have two and we still haven't really get, got a chance to make anything for it. Um, but I know that that's gonna you know kind of take oh, it's gonna off. It's gonna be huge. You know? It's gonna be huge. Yeah, man. Like the no, I haven't I haven't used any of the AR stuff. I used lots of VR stuff and the Vive and all that kind of material. And like, but I do think that there's like a conceptual leap that has to be made for basically for everyone who designs stuff for this. Like, there, like we have yet to figure out exactly what the hell this is. Like, it's going to be everywhere, you know. And everyone agrees that it's great, but nobody knows what to do with it quite yet, you know. And right. uh, and I feel like there there are only a few people I've talked to that have like some real edge at all as to where it's going. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel I, I feel like the 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 mindset of like you know just accepting that the future is going to be constant 
is right. the right way to go. You know, like the, there's no surprise left in this stuff. Like you just say, okay, the new stuff is here by Tuesday. The new stuff is here by Tuesday. Yeah. And so like you get in this mode of just like, you know, when, when I saw the Sandcastle stuff today, and I saw that same video and I was just like, of course, of course that's here. You know, and and by yeah. next week they'll be printing hamburgers, you know, out of a machine in my wall. And then yeah. next after that, you know, like I'll have a, uh, you know, like I, I won't be able to tell the difference between like, you know, the movie that I'm watching or the life that I'm living. You know, like it's all going right, to start right. merging. Right. You know? Yeah. Um. Nice but I think I feel like, yeah, you know, so like this gets into this this whole strange realm of like, I think it's a uh, it's not only a new form of art that you have to start prepare for. But it's a new way of thinking about how this stuff is done, right? And uh, and the and the and the kind of like work environment and the kinds of jobs that we're trying to prepare ourselves for, you know, when we go to these, you know, mm -hmm. things like you know what's coming up, you know, like the the real uh, sort of, sort of forward future thinking stuff is uh, is not like oh look at this new brush for a painter, you know, right. <laughs> you know, it's like, how do I apply myself as an actual artist in this world where I can now do pretty much anything I please? Yeah, yeah. You know? It's 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 funny because like lately, just just for personal artwork, in, in, in myself, you know, background was a lot of three D and and whatnot in environments and all that good stuff. And I think mm -hmm. I find a lot of pleasure lately now in like doing like matte paintings and stuff like that at home and like. Right getting into that type of deal, but more so then from the study part of it, because, you know, you need to study, you know, other artists and study, you know, the techniques, you know, you get, you start listening to these podcasts where you start getting into some of the really great guys where they're, where they had forethought before, you know, so you go back, you look at their artwork now, and you're like, man, that's kind of like, we do that now, like, the, you know, like the, the flying cars and the cars that fly. Right. They drive themselves, right. the jets and stuff, and the holodeck lens and stuff like that, and the hollow lens and the minority parts. You know, I, I'm really getting into those matte painters and concept artists that, like, we're thinking of this stuff in terms of a functional standpoint. You know, sure, and, exactly. and, and, and now you see it, and now you see it becoming there's, there's something to be said well, about, you know, you know, it's like thinking because, about like, design what, what in really, that way. Yeah. Right. right. Well, I mean, like, what's, what's sort of wonderful, I mean, like, this is sort of like, you know, from my own personal standpoint, like my Matt Panning heroes were people like, you know, like Art Cruikshank and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Mike Pancrazio and, and dudes like that, like Empire Strikes Back stuff. And these are guys that like were, you know, I was like, oh, you know, it's like real artists painting on glass, you know, really painting, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, all this kind of stuff. And then, yeah. you know, there was this, you know, 20 year period of high tech evolution, right? And where everyone's just like talking about, you know, like, oh, the, the RAM, the blah, and this new plugins. And I'm just like, well, you know, I don't, this is not my bag, dude. Like, I'm an artist. I'm a painter. Mm -hmm. And I'm an illustrator. And, uh, and now everything is becoming so, like, the conversation, uh, both, you know, like, societally, we become more educated about technology, obviously. But, mm -hmm. like, the, the, they are designing towards that. So you can be, like, you can forget about the technology and you can be the artist again. And for me that that's a really special, like it's amazing that I live long enough, you know, to right. bridge that gap, you know, where I'm just yeah. like, Oh shit. You know, like now, now let's come back to the basics of like, can you come up with cool stuff? Can you represent this? Well, and, you know, and do you have good you, ideas? Yeah. And what ways can you get it done? You know, to do that? How, how exactly? Exactly. Like, and it's, now it's, it's a big so wide open field. Now. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. It's, it's beautiful. It's like a shift, especially with matte painting. It's like it's like shift we did. We just like segue into matte painting. Sorry, but like it's yeah, the, it's, yeah. it's a shift though. If you think about yeah, it, yeah, absolutely. Dude. With that, because like I always like you know even when teaching and stuff like that, you know, to keep a, a class, you know, a Photoshop class more spicy, if you will, and keep it keep it like interesting. You know, that was like a segment that I in that I invested in in terms of like you're gonna learn about matte painting or whatever you don't know why this right. deals with photoshop but it does but first let's go way right. back right look at this yeah. old ass picture this dude's painting on glass right he's putting the yeah. glass in front of an old school camera and taking the shot like <laughs> for real and then let's <laughs> right. show, let's see let's look at empire strikes back remember that one section yeah that's not really cg that's someone yeah. that's someone being badass right yeah and this is someone, oh, someone doing it right yeah you know? exactly 
And then like, oh, that's that's this is sparse. This is this artist. So this artist. Oh yeah, right. he's using Photoshop. And then somebody yell out, yo, that's Photoshop. Oh, now you know why they pay me here, right? And I, yeah, exactly. You know, <laughs> exactly. making it into exactly. a joke, but like. You know, you I, I don't. I don't feel it's like it's not a problem. Like, uh, like I, I really admire great, you know, sort of technologists and stuff like this. Like people that right. really know how to make uh, the, the techno bend the bend the technology towards them because they know how to code, they know how to do it. Like mm-hmm. I'm amazed by that. Right. But I think ultimately the goal for even the most like math based person is to produce great art. Right. You know, and so like, yeah. like that that is the that is the only dialogue for me. The only dialogue that I'm ever interested in is like how can we make how can we how can i get this out of my heart and onto the screen you know and uh and then there's been a major major change very recently where things have their technology has grown beyond itself you know like it's no longer technology it's just a tool right and um and conceptually that's a that's a really really like that's that's the most exciting thing to me, and I think that like you're seeing like to to see those videos today, I was like, oh my god, you know, it's just like, like that's the kind of thing like if I were you know 18 years old, like yeah. I would hop right right into that. Like that is the future. Yeah. That is it, the future. It works, man. I, I, I've seen young people get you know excited about that thing by mm-hmm. like. You, just taking just taking forty five minutes to get take them on a journey from then till now, right. and then just tell them the big show them the big picture of like, yo, now you kind of kind of appreciate what you're using as a tool, right? But it's all about any means necessary. It was like yep. that dude was like, I just need to get this shot. How do I get the shot done? You yeah, have, exactly. you have only this tool. How do I get this shot done? Oh yeah, Photoshop. When Photoshop wasn't enough. Then they start moving into 3D. It's because like any means necessary. Like it's right. not. Yes. Yeah. Well, because I mean, get, this, you know, that is the like it. that. That is real. Like uh, that's real filmmaking right there. Because I mean, like you know, like I'm I'm an independent filmmaker. You know, and I like you know I I I normally shoot with about like six dollars for Subway sandwiches for the crew. I mean, like that's <laughs> that's how it works, man. And like the mindset you got to get into is like. How do we how do we do this right now? How do we do this right now? Like I'm not interested in in like some you know hyper technological long term solve. I like I want to know it now. You know I want I want to figure it out right now. And uh, I think that if people are finally understanding like that is the like for the professional artist that is the point of view you are, are almost always in because like clients and uh, and people that are you know like people that want stuff from you don't want it hypothetically they want it right away <laughs> right yeah do that know. every day how do that's, I, that's that's the scene how do i get it done you know? how do you get it done how do you I get try, it done i try to tell the, the artists underneath me that just want to make make stuff i'm like yeah that's cool we could do it that way we could right. do it from scratch it right. sounds amazing in 04. at this point in time <laughs> you're gonna take this model and you're gonna retrofit it to get it done Get it, <laughs> get it done. Get it done. Rest yourself on your own time. Yeah, if you get yeah, if you exactly. get, it, get it done faster, then you give your more more your time yourself more time at the end to make it look as amazing as possible. But like yeah, exactly. you know, afford yourself more time later by problem solving on how to get it done first, rather than being like, "Yo, we need to do this. We need to do the starting from scratch here." No, get it done. You're a production artist. Yeah, because I mean, like you're, you're not a fine artist. artist. You know, the, the old days, like the old days when they're doing comics, right? You know, and they're right. doing comics in the seventies. Like that was a hustle, right? Like that is just yeah. like that's yeah, deadlines. And all those guys, yeah. Back in, seriously, you know? dude. Yeah. Seriously, <laughs> and like that's that's not like oh, well, I'll grade this in Photoshop. I mean, it's just like you are out there with a fucking with an exacto knife, you know, exactly. cutting out like <laughs> like this, and, is, and, this and, is what's happening. And, and, in ink, <laughs> in ink, in <laughs> real ink on real paper, exactly. Mm-hmm. You know these these, these, these guys are closer pins. to right. I mean, like that's like these guys are closer to auto mechanics, you know, yeah. than uh, than we are. Yeah. But like, yeah. the heart of it is like like the reason why you put up with the technology is because you love the art, right? You know? And like that's 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 where it comes from. No matter, and and this is like when you go to these things, when you go to this thing, you know, that was this weekend or whatever it is, like, like CTN. that's yeah, like this is the that's how, like because we talk about how to connect with people, you know, and right, like how right. to uh, like at what way, like you know, what to talk about, whatever. Like the thing to talk about with artists is art, 
<laughs> like that's what's going to ring their right. bell. That's what's going to always, always do it. It always comes back, right? That's and then, exactly true. When we get to that art, you know, the internet is is always favorable to us. Because now your yep. connection sounds amazing. Yep. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> By I, the way, I have to give props to Microsoft because I switched over to Explorer. And here we are. <laughs> yeah, because Microsoft, <laughs> yo, Microsoft said, yo. <laughs> Glad you understand who runs the world. Thank That's you. right. Cash that check and get online. Here we go. <laughs> Talked about me for twenty minutes. Okay, cool. Now I'm gonna get. Now, yeah, now, right. now I told the boys to turn your internet back on. It's like the mob. <laughs> they gave us our twenty minutes. Go ahead and open up the internet. That's yeah, right. Go That's ahead. Right. Let them go. Charlie, Char- Char- can I ask? You, can I ask you what are your what are your big artistic inspirations? In terms of. Like you're comics man, so they like what are the what are the old school comics? What are the what things you cut your teeth on? What, are, what are things you learn? About? Okay, so if we're gonna go there, um, <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm I'm a big I'm a big purist in terms of mm-hmm. like my my art background, right? I it grew up pretty humble beginnings in terms of it, like um, very early on when I first started drawing and stuff like that. Mark Kistler was a, was a really oh, yeah. big uh, influence on me. On PBS, I was a PBS kid because my mom sure. loved Faulty Towers and all that stuff. And she oh watched. yeah, absolutely, hell yeah. My mom was like a <laughs> chemist in college, and her minor was archaeology. You right. know, so I was like, "Yo, why don't you go with the ladder so we can be Indiana Jones family?" Yo, <laughs> so like people right. doing that. She's like, "Exactly, go in there and do your homework." <laughs> uh, <exactly. laughs> so, well, you know, I, I think from that she <laughs> dig up she, your homework. You know, yeah, but from that, I think she liked PBS, like that old school. And I did that for my daughters and stuff at first. Like, that's all we had on. So, like, you right. know, the old culture of, like, you know, the bed and breakfasts in the castles of Europe and all that good stuff. Absolutely. So, that stuff. And I got into, like, Doctor Who, and I tried to read. Oh, yeah. uh, the old I tried school to Doctor read. Who, which still like, old school still English that, version. Like, it scares you know? me, man. That shit scares yo, me. I'm just yo, like, there's a I'm there's yeah, a black dude, dude on the old Doctor Who, and he's on all these old sci-fi things, and he looks kind of like Most Def. So when uh, <laughs> no. Most Def, so when so another book, okay, fast forward. Another mm-hmm. book was um, uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy with Most Def. Uh, also, right, <laughs> right. So they made a movie, but I read the book and I watched the original yeah. English one um, oh, yeah. years ago. And I tried to read the book like 15 times when I grew up, right? Because I, I read about it. I found out about it. And what did you used to do back in the day before the internet? You go to the library, right? Your yeah, mom's right. like, oh, you want to go to the library? Your mom sends you to the library by yourself and you chill at the library for two or three hours, have a librarian help you find this book, big old thick book. And I remember trying to read it as like a 10-year-old and not understanding it, coming back, picking it up again as like a 14-year-old, almost getting through a couple chapters, you know, then doing it in high school, you know, and just so then, and then it, it turned to comics, right? Mm-hmm. So you know, got all the greats in the '90s, right? You got um, you got Jim, you got Jim Lee, you got Joe Madrier, you got yeah, um, yeah. all the all the guys. Jim Lee, over Jim Lee was a big one with me. I love I love Jim, and his right. X Men stuff was just like mind blowing. I love that. Yeah, you got, you got Todd McFarlane on 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 some on some level, but I wasn't always the biggest Spawn fan because I grew up very religious. Right. But I was always the biggest Spawn fan because I thought his his panels got too, um, and I'm not graphic. I don't want to use the word muddy, and not necessarily graphic, but a graphic tired. in a graphic in a way yeah. of busy. Where I was like, man, it's just a lot. Yeah, they were busy. I, li- um, I liked his original when he was working on Spider Man. I thought that was when he did his best stuff. Like but, he got a but, little bit exaggerated after a while. Exactly, exactly. But my favorite was Jay was was uh was Joe Medjer, J. Scott Campbell. Mm-hmm. Uh, was yep. was really yeah, really yeah. really resonated with me. And then I got into all of the X Men stuff. Got into all the. Uh, yeah. The old school Green Lantern. I really love Green Lantern. Only, only DC's only saving grace with me in my life. And then I. Moved <laughs> no, I totally agree. I mean, there yeah, they, they have yet to make the bullshit. great Green Lantern movie, but there's some good stuff there, man. Yeah, like Green Lantern. Yeah, everything else is rich. Money. Yes, the corpse. Yeah, we start talking about the corpse. Oh yeah, yeah. you want to talk about one of those trigger trigger things? Yo, yeah. I'm gonna talk about. I'm gonna talk about. It's all about fear, you know. <laughs> Yeah, no like, no like, like, you know. Uh, but anyway, um, you go into this. So I was really being the comic books because what I would do is I would try to draw them, right? And I'd be right. that dude to get frustrated. I think Carlos talked about this in one of the other shows. I would get frustrated and I get put on punishment for the afternoon or almost get my ass beat because I'd be like pissed, <laughs> and my mom be like, "Oh no, 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 you're not gonna be uh, uh-uh. uh," and that would get That's my stuff taken. Right? I would literally get put up in the closet, you know. 
And then she gave it to me like a day or so later and, to, and tell me to calm down and like if you want to do anything, you have to practice and all this. You know, you give you the pep talk or whatever, right. and, you know. And my and my my dad will come by and say, "Why are you crying? Like, what's that? <laughs> why are you crying? Why don't you just figure out how to do it? But you can't cry with water all in your eyes and stuff. You ain't be able to look at look at your paper. It's all wet." <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? Exactly. It'd be like a very masculine way of like, "Yo, what are you doing?" You know, my mom would be like, "Why are you crying? Getting pissed?" Like, no, nothing should make you that mad. You know, but yo, that's how I got it. You know, that's how I got yeah. into stuff. And then, and yeah, but so comics that. was always thing. Then you, every I think everybody, I don't know why, I think everybody has like a little bit of an anime uh, a phase that was in like freshman year oh, of sure. college. But then I realized yeah. that I mean, like, like I'm obviously a big, I'm a big uh, Akira Ghost in the Shell kind of guy. Yeah, so the Akira one. Back, yeah. I fall asleep on that shit though. Not everybody. I ain't gonna lie. It doesn't make any sense to find everybody. Be like, there's some other people, <laughs> motion graphics. There's some other famous people that love that, and they are, like y'all know good and well y'all fell asleep on that. You know, you had to watch it like 25 <laughs> times because you would fall asleep on a Saturday afternoon. You get into it, and it's, he start growing and start into the blob and all this. Like, yeah, oh you yeah, might, right. oh, yeah. You're like, what? You know, Ghost in the Shell is better. Right, uh, Ghost, yeah, Ghost, oh, Ghost of the Shell is one of my favorite movies ever. You know, oh yeah, that was, that was good. And then you realize yeah. these guys are like masters, right? Because yeah. so then I got into art, and since I was at an art school, I got into more so the art of these things rather than wanting to watch them. So as yeah, my sure. friends got into watching them, you mm-hmm. know, and I think some of my friends thought I fell into the trap of just wanting to be an anime artist. I never wanted to be right. an anime artist or anything like that, but I got into the of uh, these things are really cool because these guys are putting together really cool designs and architecture, and I want to know who made this. And then oh, I find out this good. Yeah. This dude has a book of like a thousand sketches from the. Well, last I mean, year. like there's there's the, there's the thing that I will say. There's the things that the thing that I would say is just because like I, you know, I'm a I'm a giant movie freak all over the place. Like I watch, there's literally there's no decade you can't ask me about in terms of like what I love for movies. <laughs> um, but like I always I say that it. there's there's no there, like, there's a big difference between uh, loving watching movies and loving making movies. Those are two different loves for me. Like I yeah, love right. making movies. Yeah. Um, but when I first moved out to California, you know, when I first moved to LA, I was like, you know, I was expecting everyone to be like, you know, like a Turner classic movies, IMDb based, you know, kind of person. Mm-hmm. And uh, almost everyone I was working with, you know, was not. In fact, like most people were not were not movie watchers they were just movie makers you right. know and uh like there were there were technicians and they were like man most of the folks i knew at dd for instance you know just like like they're really heavy like old school model makers and old school sculptors and like they were making the transition to right, 3d right. and all this kind of jazz uh but they you know, they had a couple of favorite movies but tend to be sort of like you know stuff like oh you know i love that jim carrey movie you know i'd be like <laughs> Oh, okay. I mean, that's cool too. That's all right. But I was expecting like some deeper film knowledge, but like the fact is like, you know, like when you're talking about your friends, you know, like they're your friends that like read comics and then, then you, you're practicing the art. Like there's a division point there when you make this realization. I mean, this is what happened for me. It's just sort of like when you just go, there's a, there are two different kinds of things happening for me here. Like, right. like, of course I love watching the stuff, you know, I love watching Kira all day long, but like, the the process of doing it and the process itself is a is 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 a different kind of special personal kind of love that I can connect with artists on a whole different level on. Right. You know, it's not just like it's not just like reading a comic. It's right. like partaking in something else. You know, partaking. That, you you feel a part of that community. You feel a part of part of that movement. I, I always exactly. Say. And and, exactly. and then I would find myself looking. So I love watching movies. I have a very very like eclectic taste. I don't try to be too opinionated about different movies, but at the same time, mm-hmm. I I know what's good and what's bad, and I like cinematography what it, for what it is. Sure. But at the same time, with comics and stuff too, and those 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 early animes that I did like, I found myself less and less buying anime and buying more of the art of whatever that artist was was doing. Right. And then when the anime came along that held my attention, now you're in like that high regard because most of right. them got into right. this teeny, teeny bopper drama that I didn't really care about, right? But stuff right. like Ghost in the Shell, you know, the few ones from like Princess Mononoke, a couple of them, but even sure. those got too ethereal, you know, at times. But the good right. action ones that kind of gripped you like, man, that was really good. Let's watch it again. 
you know, then <laughs> I, 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 like, I like this. Like, when I talk about Ghost in the Shell, there's one moment in Ghost in the Shell that sticks with me every single time I watch it, and it's the it's the bit when uh, the dude is uh, like, there's the big chase through the market, right? And the guy's got the invisible suit, whatever it is, like right, 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 and, uh, right, and and he raises the gun up like with the uh, the shells that are sort of overcharged for the gun. Right, right, and right. There's yeah. this moment when he puts his foot down and sort of digs his foot in just oh, before they, he they fires. Oh, his foot? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, that. that is the greatest <laughs> moment in, like, anime storytelling I have ever seen. Dude, there's some parts. We'll talk about the parts before that when he was running and people were, were having to, like, hand draw people getting hit by something they didn't see. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, Bang! Suddenly, just just knocked, all, this, all this into, stuff is just like, knocked out in the air. Yeah, like Carlos, um, Carlos does a lot of like two D animation stuff like that. Like, how do you, how do you do that, right? Like, you draw somebody getting bumped by somebody they don't see, and then make it look like, right. oh, you know, you just like it's, it's, that it's just looks totally right. believable. Yeah, just totally, t- totally, believable. totally believable. Yeah, that's that's a cool spot. That's a cool segment. You like? Yeah, it's, it's really, like that 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 section of the movie really contains so much. Of it, like that's the one I show to people when I talk about Ghost in the Shell. I mean, like, there's two there's two great bits. I mean, like obviously the whole movie is a great bit, but I mean, like mm-hmm. the the bit when it's just like um, you know the music's playing and they're showing all the imagery of the city, and then it's just that bizarro montage is yeah. one, and the other is the chase uh, through the market, which is just right. like that is action movies in a nutshell man that's like action story movies. and it's meaning totally and everything yeah absolutely beautiful like you you can't get better than that mm-hmm. sequence because it, it feels is it like when he looks up and looks at the airplane like that's going overhead right you know right, like, yeah. The, yeah. like right. so it gets this weird spiritual component and every, like yeah. everything is rolled up in this big beast and all of these things are mm-hmm. purely artistic choices. Like they're not technological choices. They're not novelty. It's not like how do we get the 3D to do this crazy 3D thing. It's not like what kind of new program can we use. It's simple, straightforward mm-hmm. illustration and filmmaking. Sketch and zone. That's what I'm, the you sketch this, zone, like dude. Right this now. is it. This, this is it. <laughs> like that's what brings it out for me. When I see that stuff, that's what I get yeah. excited about. Technology is marvelous. You yeah. Know, and, but but right. technology is only ever a tool. You know, yeah. you gotta you gotta activate your heart. That's the only thing that happens. It's the only thing worthwhile. So if you and didn't was, notice everyone who's talking, Daniel for many years was a matte painter. You know, and like I think the natural progression of those who have to construct, you know, concepts and designs and shots is to move into to filmmaking, you know, and I I think everyone I've heard has done the same type of profession. It kind of goes toward that. The keynotes you pick up on cinematography are really amazing i like and uh it's the, one of those cool things to talk about um with you but like yeah breaking down this just reminds me of i was listening to the podcast collective podcast and do you know of the designer mike mike hill no i don't no um no. so he does a lot of design uh design concepts for like video games as well as mm-hmm. i think he did some movie stuff or whatever but ash thorpe was uh, interviewing him over at uh, the industry in, was it industry workshop or something like that in in London, and he was he was breaking down. He seems to be a self proclaimed hermit. He seemed a little bit of like, <laughs> you know, um, an artist. I just call him an artist, you know, on purpose. Like he's got he's a little bit of an introvert, a little bit of a hermit. You know, he'll do, he'll do a bunch of designs and stuff like that, and then he'll like mm-hmm. take it like a a month off and kind of hermit. But what he likes to do in his spare time is analyze movies, right? Yeah. Like analyze Jurassic Park. And this is why he right. wants to analyze Jurassic Park. And this is really cool. He, he, his, in his mind, nothing is happenstance, right? So everything has a reason. So mm-hmm. if you like Jurassic Park or Terminator for whatever reason, or Ghost in the Shell, there's a reason why you like it based off the shots that were made and how the movie right. was made, even either yes. it being intentional or non-intentional. So right. with that being said, he feels he needs to be like Silence of the Lambs style, sticky notes in his, in his box, <laughs> in, his, in, his, in, his, uh, right. in his kitchen, right. dissecting what it was that made um, Jurassic Park amazing. Yep, so that exactly. when he makes his own movie, he can kind of uncover the Da Vinci Code, if you will, 
of right. that film and well, of that spark or like any movie like think, back to the future or whatever I think it's, you know i think i think it's wonderful advice I mean, for anyone who's listening it's just like uh like if you you know if you want to get into this business in terms of filmmaking and like storyboarding and map painting and all this stuff like uh the simplest thing is to you know sort of uh 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 educate yourself on is like pick a movie that you love and this i actually learned from my friend uh a uh, very good friend of mine for a long time is this guy named gareth hines and uh, he does he's a comic book artist and it's wonderful wonderful comics um he does a lot of like shakespeare adaptations and stuff like this and and he um we were he was over at my house we we're hanging out watching terminator 2 and he was storyboarding terminator 2 as fast as it was playing, almost as fast as it was playing. And he's just like, I want to understand how this works because the action is so great. And I don't yeah. want to like spend, I, I don't want to like spend time refining the drawings. I just want to like see what the cuts are and understand the flow. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. And, and like what, what it really comes down to, I mean, and I've, I totally ripped him off. That's what I do all the time. Yeah, it's just like every time <laughs> you see a great sequence, like you want to break down like that. And like the, uh, the, like the sort of like large scale thing to learn is that there's this wonderful word that I didn't know until the movie came out and ended. It's there's a word, uh, synecdoche, right? There's a movie called synecdoche New York with, uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman. Uh, a synecdoche is, is something that is uh, a smaller version or something that is representative of a larger thing. So like the small little thing is also symbolic of a larger part of itself. Right. And, uh, and that is what, every aspect of movies and filmmaking is nice. because because every scene and every cut in a great movie is reinforcing the movie you know mm -hmm. and like what whatever you are showing is the con is is the conflict of the film whatever you're saying is whatever you're saying with a larger film is embedded in that single shot and if you can keep that in your mind all the time then you end up with movies like Mad Max Fury Road, you know, or Action you end up with movies like, yeah, it's like Ghost in the Shell where like every single element of the film right. tells you the entire story of the film. And that is the, that's the, the overall art that you're dealing with. You know, it's like, that is, that is what, like, that is the, that, that's where watching movies and making movies finally joins up. It's like joins the other, everything, yeah. yeah, it's like everything you do has to restate what the larger statement is, no matter how small it is. I have a question for both of you, though, uh, pertaining to this guy who turns himself into a hermit and disappears and dissects movies. At what point does all that turn into not fun and, and even uh, paralysis by analysis? Yeah. <laughs> right, right. I you could definitely tell he's an artist artist like you could definitely tell he has that's like who he is you know it, it's that's fun for him i don't yeah. think normal people ever do that but like yeah i think it can get to the point where it can be not fun or you know overkill you know but you know case in point he was like it was fascinating to listen because i listened to him before and he has amazing artwork but like it got to the point where he was like, one of my movies he loved the most was like Dark Knight, right? He loved, he loved that. He wished more comic book movies went that way because he said, and he said, here's the scene, and this is why I love it, right? He says, you have a young, you have young Bruce Wayne who's just watched his parents murdered, and the shot is of him in the police station, right? Mm -hmm. Just freaking out, clinching his dad's jacket, right? right. Detective walks up, grabs it, tells tells him it's going to be okay. Goes to grab the jacket from him. He clinches it tighter, right? And then he goes and he takes the jacket and then puts it around him like a cloak, right? And then you hear somebody, some, some, uh, the detective's boss say, "Hey, Gordon, I need you in here, right?" And you realize that's, you know, Gordon, you know, and mm -hmm. you realize that like it's, there's all this sim symbolic you know so in some know. cases i'm like oh wow that was cool i think i might have caught him calling him gordon when i originally saw it in the theater but i never caught all this extra stuff that he was saying which you kind of figure oh that's kind of cool how they did some foreshadowing there or whatever but like i could tell that dude just sat there and like 
went through each of them because you're like, oh, this is the Dark Knight. What are you talking about? Let's talk about something like, you know, Goodfellas or something like that or something right. better. But like, he's finding little things in that. So I think it could be good, but there is could be a point for normal people that would be overkill, right? And you go right. into that whole realm where we say, don't be that dude that like, it's too opinionated when you go meet that artist. <laughs> you know, exactly, right? Exactly. <laughs> you know, there's, exactly. there's a fine that, line yeah. to this, you know, yeah. right? You know, so because well, I mean, like yeah. it, it all it all has to do with like you know like you can always communicate with somebody else based upon like the emotional experience like no matter what it is like you can you can modulate how much like tech there is how much like you know Wikipedia stuff you want to throw in there but like people are going to like you know if you watch you know whatever you watch uh, Silence of the Lambs like everyone's going to be scared whether or not they know who Ed Gein is you know right. like you don't mm-hmm. they don't need to know that stuff in order for it to work. And like, or, or Dark Knight, I mean, like, you don't even know, you don't need to know, you know, who Batman is in order for Dark Knight to work, right? you know, right. and I feel like that that's the, uh, like, that's the, that's the sort of like, you know, I don't want to get off topic, but like, that's the kind of slump we've fallen into with like, new comic films, you know, like, uh, especially the past like year or whatever it is, where like, it's all this sort of novelty and all this nifty little things and like, oh, is Harley Quinn represented, you know, as close to the comics as she could be? I'm just like, you got to get to the story, dude. You know, like right. I need to, you know, right. and, and like the, the one great moment for me in say like suicide squad, right. Is like, I really love the Harlequin Joker story, even though there's only three seconds of it. Like that was the powerful story of the movie and they spent no time on it whatsoever, you know? Mm-hmm. And there's this great, great moment where uh, Harlequin thinks that Joker is dead. Right. And it's raining and none of the rest of the suicide squad is around and she is devastated. Like she's obviously wrecked because she loves this dude. Like so the love of her life is the Joker. Right. And then Will Smith and the crew comes around the corner and that's a shot of her and she's soaked with rain and she's obviously just been crying, but you see her sort of like steal up and go, Hey, it's me. And then put on her act again. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that is the most powerful thing I've seen in superhero movies in a long time. This movie is not very good, but I'm like, that's what you need to identify. Cause that like, that's the thing that we're exactly because like, regardless of what I know, if I know who Harlequin is, if I know who any of this stuff is, if I know if it's connected to the DC universe or not, I understand what she's doing right there. And that makes me feel sad. Right now. Man, that's it. like whatever you're doing when you're making a movie, whether you're drawing or drawing, whatever, and they're doing a map painting, like that's the understanding that you have to have is like, what is, like, what are we watching this for? Is it for the novelty or is it for the emotion? Yeah. You know, and it's always for the emotion, always, every single time. And people are getting tired of bullets two hours worth of bullets and explosions oh, and stuff. Like, yeah. can we, can we stop? Yeah, it's hideous. It's tedious. Can what, we be what, was your, with that? Like, what, what was your favorite movie this year? What was, Carlos, what was your favorite movie this year? Uh, is X Machina this year? No. Yeah. No, that was a great movie. movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't remember. Yeah, um, exactly. It, yeah. <laughs> Good point. The weak, <laughs> the weak year. Every blockbuster fell apart. Everything. It's all. It's all yeah. been bad. I mean, even I like, even the. I remember when I went to go watch uh, Civil War. I remember thinking, enough with the explosions. Like, if it wasn't for Spider Man, like talking constantly right. while he was fighting, I loved that. Right. No, yeah, I mean, it's, it's super fun. Super fun. Without, yeah. Yeah. I. I, th- I think yeah, Civil War was one of my favorites, but it was because the realization that. There's a black man on screen that's amazing. <laughs> oh yeah, and he was great. Like that, that was the the two. Because I'm a things. comic nerd, and that's how Black Panther has always been. No, like, like and, and then you have like Cage, which came out this year. That's really cool. Right. And I don't want to get the whole Afrocentric thing going, but at the end of the day, the Captain America movies or the Iron Man and the in the uh, War Machine, War Machine. I kind of started dreading the some of the Avenger movies because when they had War Machine in them, he was like, we lo- <laughs> he was the token like black guy, but like right. almost the heel of jokes. 
which was like yeah. uh which really annoyed me because like War Machine was always a uh Air Force his own, like badass. Yeah, his own right. dude. Yeah. You know, it should have been he was really like a follow orders type of dude if the rock played War Machine. Right. You know, even right. though that probably wouldn't be the best one. You need somebody like you need somebody who like played Luke Cage to play War Machine, right? That's well, who then, you need. yeah, exactly. Chocolate like, dude, things, right? No, no, right. no, uh, no, no fault to John Cheadle, who's one of the best. No fault to him. Yeah, yeah it's just the fantastic. way they wrote it. It's yeah, like the way they wrote it. Them. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the, War Machine the, looks smaller than the Iron Man suit, which he should have looked like a flying tank. Like, exactly. you know, it's like so. I have little things about it, you know, that was good, but the way they did Black Panther was out of left field for me. Yeah, man. In that, that whole notion of the comic book movies, like yeah. they, it's almost was like out of place. Like, yo, well, I'm, was... I'm really excited about the uh, I'm really excited about the Black Panther movie they're trying to. Put oh together. yeah, and the, yeah. and the dude that they have got a, the dude they have um, directing it. Yeah, it's the mm-hmm. uh, and what a what a wonderful time. It's a black director. Through. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's dude. great. Yeah, dude, no, he was fighting. Business. He was fighting Bucky with no armor. Yeah. Like <laughs> it's with for no real. armor and, and, and some black slacks, and was yeah, like, and exactly. then still jumped like twelve feet in the air and landed on the steps. Like what? <laughs> I'm still not done with you. Like yeah, there was so really much really like there was so much like, <laughs> and then just commanded a presence on the screen, right? So then Absolutely. when he did talk, it was like, yeah. No, then that guy's like, I mean, that guy's a marvelous actor. Great, great yeah, actor. Yeah, great actor, man. So, like, that was, I had to t- pick my moments, you know, yeah. out of those things. That was my really, because then it, it became more fun, you yeah, know, no, where I, I was. I like, totally agree. And that like, chasing, I feel like the, you know. Yeah, I mean, the, or the, the, uh, the Ant Man at the airport stuff was fantastic. I mean, that, that was more, that was more Ant Man than I, that's what I wanted from the Ant Man movie, and they yeah. finally gave it to me. And, uh, he was like a little version of, like, Spider Man, like just spastic yeah. and like happy to be there. Exactly. But no, I mean, it's kind so of like, bumbling through, you know. <laughs> right, because I mean, like that that movie was the the example of like here's something that is extraordinarily well made, but not very good. Right. You know, like where I'm just right. like everything. There's I can't I can't call out anything that's bad. It's all good. It's it's all entertaining. It's all really good stuff. Under but the like, weight of like trying to make all those characters work and like be yeah, true just, to it's it. too much it's stuff, man. You need a. Uh, uh, blockbuster writer right. on the level of Steven Spielberg to be writing those things for it to really, really work. Charlie, did you get to, did, did you get to see there online very briefly, there's a recut of both Man of Steel and, uh, and the new movie as one film. Did you see that thing? Uh, I, I don't think I did. No. Wow. I, 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 have a cop, I have a copy of this. It's totally legal and I would never give it to anybody legally, but I'll give you a copy of it. It's like, <laughs> like this dude did a cut of this thing. <laughs> it's terrible. I would never, don't download things legally, kids, and also drugs. But like this, <laughs> this, <laughs> <laughs> this thing, it, it essentially takes Man of Steel and uh, edits it together, cross edits it with, um, uh, uh, the new one, whatever the title is, it yeah. makes makes it into makes it into one full film. And what's does, really bizarre is that it's does it, make it better. It like I was not a big, I didn't like Man of Steel at all. It didn't uh, either. Th- and like this this thing is unbelievably compelling and powerful. And I was like, what the hell? You took the same footage and made it into a good movie. Who did this? Yeah. Yeah, this I I'll have to I'll dig this up for you. But I mean, like it's it was on it was online very very briefly before Warner Brothers knocked it down, and I wish that they would watch it and learn from it because I was like this thing, especially with with what they made Man of Steel into. Like the second half yeah. works pretty well, but like the like how they reconstructed Man of Steel, like yeah. made it into a into a suddenly very personal, very emotional. This is what you needed. You you have to try to make yeah. Superman into Batman. Without doing it, even though because DC is so flawed, I'm sorry, I'm I'm a Marvel person. I'm sounding really yeah. biased right now, but DC is so <laughs> stupid with their scripting over the years, yeah. where they kill off a man and bring him back because America wants him to come back. And he's basically yeah. a god that you can't really have anybody fight them. So the level of hierarchy of like who's stronger than who in in the DC universe is weird and and convoluted because Superman. Right goes and, and sleeps in the sun for two days and comes back as, as a Super Saiyan. Like, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> you know, so... Yeah, and that's what this movie showed. Like, let's just yeah. 
nine eleven everything in the DC universe. It's just a bunch of stuff, <laughs> and everybody's okay with it. And Lawrence Fishburne almost gets crushed by buildings. Like it's just, right. it's just, it's just ridiculous at how much Zod just went crazy. Which yeah, you're trying to give it a realness, which I can understand. But we know Superman to be like draw you out, so that right. like Metropolis doesn't become. And I get it that it's supposed to be like he's young, he's doing it for the first time. So the Superman we know and love, he's been doing it for like twenty, thirty years already, so he can understand how to. No, it just didn't. It didn't work, you know. That's just no, because a, they, that's they, just they, a wonderful there's no story excuse. Yeah, yeah. It's just a wonderful excuse to knock buildings down. Yeah. Yeah. Which it was a lot. Little... I was like, people are dying. <laughs> Who that go? Yeah. With? It's I it's like said, like are dying. <laughs> okay, so so here we go. <laughs> God, my brain is a wonderful, weird place. <laughs> you know, uh, boy, you know when you started watching movies and then you'd start, maybe you'd see some boobies like maybe two or three times a movie and you're like, oh my God, that was a great movie. And then you watch Showgirls. Oh man. Oof. And you're like, oh, boy. oh man. I love Verhoeven, oh. but I still can't figure that out. And then you're like, <laughs> and you're like, we get to see him again. Put your shirt on. Like, there's yeah, too much of a good... There's no mystery. There's no mystery. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. you can knock down a couple buildings. We'll give you a couple buildings. But after, like, 45 minutes of buildings coming down... Yeah, yeah. When the Daily set. Planet went down, I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, this is, like... Did they, did they watch the... the did they watch <laughs> Injustice? The video game? Like, did they go yeah. and talk to NetherRealm? Because, like... There's a couple sections. I was like, wait a minute, what is what are they doing? It's like a video game plot in a movie. Yeah, yeah it's exactly. like exactly. It's like Superman was let loose on uh, uh, Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, <laughs> but I saw a glimmer, right? There. <laughs> glimmer, and, and then like they did the right thing and they played it up with the Batman versus Superman because now Batman's like, yo, you fucked everything up, right. and you have to die. But then at the end of the day, I'm like, Batman. Like you look really Meanwhile, cool. Meanwhile, Batman Alex needs Roth to carry version. his ass back up to Gotham. Ain't nobody messing. Yeah. Keep right. your like, ass like, over there in your gonna, city and mind your own damn die, business. Dude. Like that's that's the Super Saiyan. You can't fight the Super. He's pulling his punches so he doesn't kill you. Like <laughs> <laughs> it's like you fighting right. an ant, right? You gonna you gonna right. you gonna mess with the ant for like thirty seconds? Like oh cool, you have a chance, but no, this is not Rocky. And then you squish the ant. That's like. Yeah. What Superman is and why fundamentally I I can't you know I I love this I I had fun watching that whole segment but at the but then I was like why is he getting hurt doesn't yeah, make right. sense right right it's like yeah. Superman would have talked him down with logic like yo dude you really can't fight me <laughs> like, <laughs> no, yeah. we, like he the would have grabbed you eyes. and <laughs> took you into the and took you into like like. And then that's when they make Batman, and um, now I'm getting on my little like soapbox. But that's when they make Batman <laughs> a little bit like Superman-ish, where he starts to being that resourceful, that person who can think of every single right. si- single situation. You know what Superman that, needs you know, to do. You know. Superman needs to take Batman and fly into space, and then just hold him there. Yeah, and say, you "Hey, know, like try breathing, you <laughs> idiot." But that's why. But that's, why that's why Batman so like in that, in That's that, why they don't have. That's know? why they don't have me play Superman because I'm smart like that. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was good that you turned those offers down, right? And then that's why <laughs> Batman. That's why Batman came up with the whole like, this is how you would kill Superman if you ever had to kill them, and like it ended up turning against him and all this other BS. But like, are you seeing what they're doing though? They're doing like a Guardians of the Galaxy ish thing with the Avengers. I yeah, mean, with the is, yes. with the um, Justice League. So I I welcome the banter. You know, yeah. the, the, they it's they had the, the, the movie. Stuff, it's yeah, it's all kind of the same stuff. Yeah. But like, okay, now you're trying to now you're starting to see that that worked for the other other guys, and it's working for your movie. And now your movie is a little bit more enjoyable to watch this crazy fight scene. Because right. I, I get a kick out of the cheesy banter, sure, even though sure. you, you made that. Wonder Woman, which could be some hidden, hidden Illuminati stuff, but you made her like totally the most badass person on screen, which I give it to her. Let's let's make the Amazons yeah. badass, you know, but yeah, I, like I need to have every Amazon like built like a 
built like a, a truck, <laughs> you know, yeah. with the correct proportions, well, you know, a... none of these skinny, <laughs> skinny women in like, you know, uh, armor. Right. But like, right. I don't know. I don't know if they did that on purpose to like, to like for the women audience, but they made Wonder Woman almost a little more awesome than she was. She was yeah, to I, mean, be like, that I think that I, mean, I, I, I think they have a real opportunity with Wonder Woman you know, with the new movie uh, mm-hmm. to try to, you know, like because she's so separate from the rest of the story, essentially. Yeah, she, you know, like you, you know, like she, she's, she's, she's like, together a little bit better. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Like that's <laughs> better a whole than Superman. Level, it's weird. Whole different <laughs> level. And like it seems like what they, the the story they're trying to tell in the trailers that I've seen for Wonder Woman anyway are is like. Like this is definitely like it looks like it's its own movie, and right. uh, and 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 really like that's the thing. That, you know, that's all I mean to say is like I want everything to be its own movie. I want everything to be like because for Stand instance, like with feet, yeah. yeah, exactly. Like I mean, like it can be connected to other stuff. That's totally fine. But mm-hmm. like for instance, like you know, um, Winter Soldier was connected to Captain America One, right, right? But it didn't. You don't need to see Captain America One to think that that's a good movie. Like Winter yeah. Soldier is a great movie. You know, right, and I was I was totally blown away from it. Like, if I knew nothing about anything, and by the way, and here's a this just to embarrass myself, uh, I was never a big Captain America fan of comics. I've read loads of comics, but I never read. No, it. I oh no, one was. Captain, right? No, one and so I yeah. did not know. Spoiler alert, everybody! I did not know that Bucky was the Winter Soldier, and yeah. when I saw the movie, it blew my goddamn mind. <laughs> I was like, Bucky, no. <laughs> How can so that be true? true. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you do know he end up turning into Captain America, right? Uh, yeah, no, eventually, yeah. No, that's, he walked yeah. away and all this other stuff. And he was a better Captain America than yeah. the original. Oh, man. But, like, but just in the context of that movie itself, I was like, this movie. is... <laughs> no, I can't believe it. I'm starting, like, crying. It's like the Empire Strikes Back of Captain America movies. I mean, that's where I was at. And like that's and the thing is, I mean, like, like that is what I want out of every single movie I see. Like, if I'm yeah. paying fifteen bucks and you know, see this at the arc light or whatever it is, like, uh, fifteen bucks should buy me that amount of emotion. You know, right. I should be that yeah. invested. And uh, and like this whole like every blockbuster that's come out, it's like, all well, everything looks great and the effects are great and uh, obviously lots of VFX artists are, you know, they're paying their rent. But like, there's no movie here, you know, yeah. and that's what's really starting to slip. I mean, like, this is like when you, when you bring up like Luke Cage, like, yeah. like I I think that Luke Cage is, you know, as a production has a while to go before it gets great. But the right. main the main dude they got and the intention they have and what they're making is fantastic. Oh yeah, you know? like they they understand what the, what they're working with. I mean, like the main dude's great, right? And like when I see just like when they're not just referencing other comics, but they're refer- referencing like you know, um, uh, Invisible Man, you know, like mm-hmm. the, the the Ellison book, you know, like they're just like, this is like, this is not just about comics. This is about like, this is about the history of black culture that leads up to this. Yes, like, unapologetically just, black. It's good. It's so this, yeah. Exactly, dude. I mean, like this is like, this is really reaching into the 70s and really taking part of this stuff, like without without kidding around. I was like, that is a voice, you know, whether, whether or not, like for me, like the filmmaking is a little faulty, but like mm-hmm. the intention is incredibly strong and right. like even just like the soundtrack sounds like you know like you know it's like you know these are old pam greer movie soundtracks and stuff like yeah. that just like this is where it should be sourced from you know this is where that's, the voice of the movie yeah, like that's, that's why i think the black good. panther one's going to be really good with with just the yeah. cast just the cast alone the dude from uh star wars and like oh yeah like yeah I without that, that, the yeah. cast has to be black you know, yeah, like that's it's not even it's dude. not even big, it's not even like a question. Like the dude yeah. who I talked, I I read something about a right the one of the writers and producers who were on uh, Winter Soldier and then Captain America and then rose rose up through the Marvel ranks and then brought Black Panther to where it is. It's a black guy. I can't remember his name, but like right. the way they're casting this and the director. I can't remember the director's name right now, but in what movie he worked on, but he worked on another movie. Oh man, I can't remember what it is. Right. But it's he a black it's a black director. You know, yeah, he worked with Michael Creed. Mike Creed. Creed. He did Creed. Yeah. yeah you, know, Creed. you know, and that was such a great remake. And then he had yeah. then Michael B. Jordan's in this movie, but he's not yeah. as 
you think he is. I think he, I think he might be like a villain or something else like that. You got Finn from Star Wars. You yep. got all these. You got I think Lupita, Lupita or whatever that girl. I think she's right. gonna be in it. Like you're yep. getting all the young Hollywood mm-hmm. um, black actors right. in there. I'm throwing some old school dudes. You know. Um, sure. I mean, you know, I don't care. I want to throw in Denzel in there somewhere. He'll have fun with it. He's old enough. He'll say <laughs> yes. Absolutely, man. You know, throw in everybody. <laughs> yeah, like this should be like an event. Not Absolutely. just because it's Marvel, but then to have everybody in, it's, it could be so big. It could be oh, it's so gonna be tremendous in, yeah. in a, in a like, good this way, is, it's, in a it's positive a, it's way. It's a tremendous, like it's a tremendous breakthrough for Hollywood to do this because, like, it's the first. It's literally the first time that. Because I mean, like all, like um, you know, like all of this stuff. I mean, like uh, you know, like um, people like like saying like you know, there's not enough, uh, you know, like there's there, you know, like oh, Oscar's so white and stuff like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. like, like what what motivates like you know, I you know, I'm completely on that side. But right. you know, at the same time, like what motivates Hollywood has nothing to do with Hollywood being racist. It has to do with making money. But I think they and, did it on accident. I think they fell into this one. I didn't think they realized. Well, this, this is the, this is like, that this executive is producer realized that black times. guy, you know, yeah. I think, but I think they fell into this. Like, Oh snap, we got, they gotta be, they gotta be what? <laughs> yeah. 95% what? Okay, of what? Fine. Like, Oh, well, like the, the conversation comes down to one thing. Okay. I guess we gotta Will do this. this money? Right. Yeah, yeah. And exactly. Because right. like the, the thing is like the reason why, like, I think that like the reason why we're in the predicament we are in terms of like uh, trying to like have uh, say black or Asian actors uh, have real representation is because people used to be, you know, mainstream audiences used to be very racist. And so right. like they didn't go to, they traditionally didn't go to see movies with like black leads and whatnot. Right. Um, and we're still well, like in a producer sense, we're still living with that legacy where it's just like, there are no, like there's like five famous black actors, you know, mm-hmm. there's Denzel, there's Chiwetel Elijah four, you know, like this, but the list is really short before people go, who, you know, what was that? Right. And, and, um, and up until now it is like, and no one talks about this, but like, because everyone wants to blame it all on big Hollywood. But like what I really blame for this problem is indie filmmakers because indie filmmakers can afford to cast whoever they want it doesn't make any difference you know mm-hmm. cast you know like cast your movie how you want to cast your movie and out of your movie being good people become famous and famousness is what sells tickets right you know and so like the reason why denzel can you know like make you know make bank on um you know magnificent seven is because everyone knows how knows who the hell he is Right. You know, people see the ads and go, oh, Denzel's great. I know, Denzel's fantastic. You know, um, but now it's come to the point that the... Shoot the wife. <laughs> yeah, dude, hey, man, I'm all for it. Like, I mean, like... The, like <laughs> the what, like, what, what, And it's awesome. You know, it's totally awesome. And then, then when it comes to something like the, uh, the Avengers and uh, Marvel's entire roster... Yeah. Uh, because especially with Civil War, you know, I pick on the movie itself, but I mean, like, because uh, the the like they are making an effort to be multicultural, mm-hmm. uh, they're like, well, it's, there's, there's women, there's black guys, there's you know Asian people, there's whatever it is. Right. Like the thing, the thing that is famous is the Marvel brand, right? right and right. what they've done the most in in doing the Black Panther movie, like they have they have said, okay, we have uh, this brand which will sell tickets regardless of whether people are famous or not in this. And so all we have to do is cast great black actors. And suddenly all these black actors are going to be famous because they're in a Marvel movie. And that Mm -hmm. forwards the entire cause, man. Like that's, that's how that happens. Like out of this stuff, like Ryan Coogler as a director who did a wonderful job with Creed and did um, uh, Fruitvale Station. Right. You know, mm-hmm. like this dude's going to be huge business and it's not because, because he is black. It's because he is awesome, you right. know, right. and everybody else in the movie gonna like, fall they get, in. is going to yeah. fall into that. I mean, like everyone's going to be given their A game. It's going to mean something else and all the other actors exactly. too, which is going to come and, and, out, and, but it's going to come out exactly. to be a great Marvel movie though, because of exactly. like the presence that dude was playing that, that character differently. Yeah. That was tremendous. Dude, he fought the time. dude in slacks. Like I don't, even, I don't even think they can fight it, right? It's like, it's, it's like it's like Black Widow almost got choked out. Like, yeah. like, like she uh, turned into a normal Becky for like a split second. It. Exactly, you know? dude. 
like for a second, like, you're like, oh man, he's about to choke this white woman. <laughs> <laughs> like, I wanted like it got like, in her way. From that point on, you know, I was like, I just want this to be a Black Panther movie. Don't disappoint dude, me. Just be Black Panther. It's just like I don't yeah. care who your League of exactly. Extraordinary Misfits are. Yeah, I'm from like, the most the advanced movie. country in the world. Like yeah. you have Tony Stark. I have 15 Tony Starks that got C's in high school. You know, like <laughs> right. You know, because exactly. you know, because like, they because at the end, you know, it's just. Everything from reading that book, comic book, everything came to like just how much higher tech, you know. Like if we go back to matte painting and like concept, what did that look like? I want, I, I need to get the art of that book, mm. but I need to know who designed those that little bit of segments that you saw, you know, were at the end where they're in Wakanda or whatever, and it just looks, yeah. it just looks advanced, you know. Yeah. Yeah, like that. That's that is the Marvel movie that I'm looking forward to the most. Yeah. I gotta be honest with you, like because cool. like that is a that's a total game changer on so many levels. And because I think that like you know, like as in terms of the movie business, like we are entering into a whole new deal. You know, yeah. where it's like it's like especially with now I'm as crazy as he is. I'm a fan of Tom Cruise. He makes generally makes good movies. Mm-hmm. Okay. But this this past weekend was a major landmark because Tom Cruise's movie came out. And it lost against the new Medea movie, oh, God. and against everything else. I mean, like that's that's where it is. Like that's the white um, right wing American audience that backs Jack Reacher, right? Uh, is not strong. Is not as strong as everything else. And so you are going to see like a much wider vision of has to all really fast that is right. what blockbusters are going to be the movies are, that's what new stuff because after this dead year where every blockbuster was as boring as possible like mm-hmm. the one thing i want is brand new fresh material and now we're going to see it from every literally from every corner of the globe and it's going to happen in the next year and a half yeah it's going to be great which is cool well wow. speaking of art of books mm-hmm. yes See that? We're gonna go ahead and go give away totally tasty art of Dave Atsy book. Sweet, sweet. Yeah. So I, I like have, turtles. Uh, so basically, what everyone needed to do was to uh, uh, what tag Dave yeah. and Sketch Zone and all that good stuff. So I have a list of people here. Okay, you got a list. You ask. Uh, Daniel, Daniel, pick a number between one and 27. Uh, 18, 18. That's my, uh, right off the bat. 18. Charlie, do you have a, all right. That, uh, that book is going to go to Carly Kurgenven, Kurgenven, Kurgenven. Yeah. We'll send you an email. <laughs> and you can send a check out to Duarte and I'll be fine. That's fine. Now what's funny is now what's funny is Dave said uh whoever if the person lives in Australia because he listened to the show and he heard me. Oh god. <laughs> sometimes you heard, your, heard your plea. Sometimes my mouth gets me in trouble. But hey, that's where you guys uh, that's why you guys uh, uh, get to benefit from, uh, because Dave said that if there's anyone in Australia that wins, he'll Just send it. them a book, and I'll send the one in the U.S. So we have, we still have a combo of stuffs. So oh, cool. okay, uh, Daniel, please pick a number between one and twenty-six. Seven. Seven. We have Adam Cozart. Yay. So um, I'm going to be reaching out to you guys, uh, Carly and Adam, and cool. we'll... Uh, guys. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what Wait, I should have done? What? What? <laughs> Adam and Carly, the winner 
day batsies. Totally tasty art of day batsies. Oh, a version, so I'm going to go ahead and stop that. Hey man, I feel like, I felt like I was homesick with a flu from school. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so every time it comes on. <laughs> it's actually amazing how many people say that. Uh, congrats, guys. Yeah. Congrats, congrats. So, yeah. So congratulations, Carly and Adam, and thank you, Dave, for uh, for number one being a loyal listener, member of the sketch. I almost said sketchy, but I was reprimanded last time I said that. Mm -hmm. uh, a loyal yeah. member of the Sketch Zone Nation. So yeah. <laughs> I like turtles, Dave. I think. Yeah. Thanks. Well. Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Who got? I have to. Uh, uh, like that. That. What? 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 Dave asked me. Oh, there it is. I like turtles. He found it. Yeah. <laughs> well, while you guys were talking, I was doing a bunch of transfers and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, we'll go ahead and get those out. Uh, Charlie, do you have a artist spotlight of the week? I can do one if you want to do one. Yeah, I have one. We can do okay. it. We've been going for damn near three hours now. This yeah, that came out of nowhere. The longest one yet, Daniel. Yeah. We didn't even we didn't even get to the topic that we were going to talk about originally. So that means we're going to have you come back on. <laughs> I would love to. That'd be amazing. Yeah, that'd be once great, I have a good connection, I can definitely do it. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, Mr. Mr. Shout out to Mr. Justin Goby Fields. Ah, yes. Justin Hope you got home. Was supposed yeah, to he get, he got swallowed by LA traffic. <laughs> <laughs> LA traffic be whooping that ass, boy. Mm -hmm. All right. So my artist spotlight of the week is um a young man by the name of Andy Estra. And uh, you guys know I, I'm, I'm down for cartoony style. Yeah, he's a good one. This guy's stuff is ooh, so well done. Um, so if you go to... What is it? It's Andy Estra? Um, Andy underscore Estra. Yeah, Andy underscore. E-S-T-R-A. E-S-T-R-A, thank you. I'm mm -hmm. not farting in a big way. Mm -hmm. um, looks like he participated in Inktober. Inktober. Um, he draws a rat. Very kid's book illustration. So yeah. It can also be turned into a cartoon. Yeah. I um, I'm I like it. Sure where he works, but uh, he, I'm sure he's working somewhere because his right. is he's got a good mechanical style too. It's like also like he's a lot, a lot of like mixture of like simple and intricate. Yeah, yeah. So great, great find. So check him out. Instagram.com slash Andy underscore. Estra, E S T R A. He already has 29,000 followers, so that means you probably have already heard of him. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay. He's got this he's got this recurring character, this little tiger leopard guy. Mhm. Mm Absolutely adorable. Holy crap. Where would he go? He does all these really cool Reminds me of like Calvin Hobbes is just like a nostalgic, cool little dude. You know what? Yeah, I didn't even put that together. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, that mad Homer. That's right there. That's why you go out and get the uh, Microsoft Surface Studio. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> devastating when that happens. Especially if you're at home and you don't have those pencil sharpeners like you do at school. Yeah. <laughs> that's some old school, old school problems there for you. Uh, you can use yeah. Tighten that right back up. Anyway, all right, Chuck, your turn. Yo, so like I told you before, which spawned our great art discussion this e this uh this evening, um, I've been on uh, uh, studying the matte painting and doing that in my spare time, and I wanted to show you a amazing artist who's worked over at Blizzard, 
Uh, his name is Anthony, and I cannot pronounce this guy's last name. F. Takari? F. Takari? F. Takari or something like that? Uh, uh, or Takari? Uh, Takari? Whatever. But uh, he's an amazing artist, and let's go through some of his work. Uh, he uses a combination of 2D and 3D for his map paintings, and they're considered, he also uh, has a little online um, educational thing called the Matt Department with another former uh, Blizzard or current Blizzard employee, but he just got some really cool, you know, maps that like tell uh, amazing stories. Um, let's go through here. Can you guys see these okay, right? Cool. Yeah. Um, it's great stuff. I mean, I, I'm always the process kind of type of guy, so I love to see the background and stuff like that, which I'm like, you know, there's been a shift, like we were talking about earlier, toward uh, full 3D maps um, that people have been doing now um, using you know, programs like World Machine and all that stuff in ZBrush where they've been basically, you know, um, full, like, you know, 3D pieces and stuff like that. But he has some great uh, tutorials and stuff like that too. And he, you know, talks about his process and all that good stuff, hours and hours worth of great stuff on Gumroad, you know. Um, so check that stuff out. You know, I always support artists on Gumroad because, it's, it's you know, it's amazing. Um, but some just some great examples of work here, you know. Um, and I always like Blizzard because Blizzard tells really awesome stories in terms of their cinematics, kind of ties in the lore that some people forget about, you know. But Blizzard is one of those guys where you watch a Blizzard cinematic, you're like, oh, that's cool. Instantly transports you. Yeah. Kind of that stuff we were talking about where, like, it's got that it factor. You don't know what it is, but you want it to keep going, you know. <laughs> and um, you can just kind of see that, like, there's this is like the evolution of how you get get stuff done, you know. Um, but um, yeah, he, but he also goes back and he has he has things that are like, you know, less um, uh, 3D and you know has more uh, 2D nature stuff to it also. But um, you know, he's got a a great phenomenal reel and stuff like that too, which is which is cool. And you know, it's just. I do some steals and stuff. It just shows really cool stuff, you know. Where you think, oh man, it's cool. It takes long, and like, nope, that's a background painting, you know. You know, it's not necessarily everything's not necessarily modeled, you know, all the time. But like, it's really good. So check his work out, you know. And it's and if you want to learn more about his stuff, go mattdepartment.com or his name. We'll have it in the show links and stuff like that. That's um, M-T-E. M A T T E department dot com. That's his like where you can get tutorial based stuff, you know, where it shows all his stuff. If you want his actual site, it's art of art dot com. So A R T O F A E dot com. Art Ofe. I like to call it. So if you try so you can just spell it. And that's how you can find find his work. And that's that, cool. man. Right on. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Uh, this is probably our longest episode so far. <laughs> Not complaining at all. I mean, I love long ones, um, especially when we get to know our guest a little bit more. Daniel, we didn't, we didn't have to talk about, hey, where did you grow up? <laughs> able to express yourself and talk about cool stuff. And so I love it. Um, but yeah, we're definitely going to have to have you back so we can and this whole uh, topic idea was Jack, and and I love getting him going on this conversation because he. Oh yeah, man, absolutely. Yeah. So it kind of turns <laughs> into like what we did with Daniel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Jack and I have had like six and seven hour versions of the sin. <laughs> hey, you want to hear who Jack is? We need to get him back on the show. He's here. He's 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 gone for this week, but he'll be back. Yeah. Yep, and we got to get him back. Once he comes back, you can really we get him going. Be like, man, Jack talked the whole show, and then kept going. <laughs> <Dude. laughs> That's gonna happen. <laughs> so, with that being said, Daniel, do you have a website up yet? 
Oh, hell no. Of course not. Hell no. <laughs> so just Whoa. to respond. Really? No art do, station? No nothing? No, I'm so lazy. But like, if people do want to, uh, <laughs> uh, if people want to go to Vimeo and uh, go to Vimeo and uh, actually just Google Vimeo spoiler <laughs> zombie, like that will lead to the short film that I directed that I showed you guys from last week, right? The, the zombie movie that I made. Yeah. Um, and uh, but I did I directed it I wrote it and also did a, bunch, did a bunch of mad effects for it as well. And, so good. Uh, oh, thanks, dude. I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and yeah, I've uh, you know I have a lot of stuff scattered around the net, but uh, I'll I'll try to actually put some stuff up so you can so you can send the link out next time. Awesome. I think uh, we might actually already have it up there. Oh, great, great, excellent. Just saying, I got you. I think we right do. on, dude. Appreciate it. Hey, Charlie. Yes, sir. If people are looking for you online, where can they find you? Well, you can find me at my website, which is www.com slash www.cargocollective.com slash Charlie B. Williams. You can go over to ArtStation, artstation.com slash Charlie B. You can find me there. Um, Facebook, you can find me at facebook.com slash Charlie B. Uh, w3. Twitter, CBW3. Instagram, Charlie B. W3. And at Almighty Pinterest, you can find me at pinterest.com slash Charlie B. W3. Excellent. Uh, I'll go ahead and toss out. Uh, well, if you don't yeah. know Justin Goby Fields, uh, you mm-hmm. should go to Ironclad, I R O N K L A D studios.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, that kid is just, I'm going to say, it, since he's not, since he's not here, and I don't know, he's, yeah. his head's going to get all big and stuff. That kid's pretty amazing. <laughs> <laughs> uh we're gonna we're gonna get him when uh when it's not raining in la mm-hmm. um also we can say that uh jack casper zach is sketchbook jack pretty much everywhere, everywhere on the web. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. i am carlos gomez you can find me at carlosrgomez.com or twitter facebook instagram pinterest behance under the name coconut justice you can find all of us at Sketch Zone. You can go to sketch.zone. You can suggest a guest by going to sketch.zone slash guest. You can uh, you can find us on Twitter at Sketch Zone. You can go to Facebook.com slash the sketch zone or youtube.com slash sketch zone podcast. And if you're there, if you're watching us on YouTube, yes. like, rate, and review. Let us Is know it? what you like, what you don't like. Um, all of that helps us out a ton. Speaking yeah. of helping us out, uh, if you're on iTunes, go ahead and leave us a uh, a review. And if you do, we will read it on the air. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, if you're on Stitcher SoundCloud, uh, we're there too. So there. Yeah, anywhere you uh, can get it. That's it for us. Have a wonderful week. See you, everyone. Take care. <laughs> Bye. Bye.